What a time for my phone to ring right when I hit the button. It never ceases <laughs> to amaze me when all this stuff happens. But uh, welcome to the 202. There, 200. Why do you say that? Two hundred and second. Two hundred and second episode. Uh, wait. The Xbox wait, 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 Two wait, wait, podcast. Wait, wait, wait. What? Isn't isn't this the two hundred and first? Well, technically, Tuesday's episode was the two hundred and first. Since it was, Dude, a, I didn't unless co- unless we're not counting it as a spe- we're not counting the special episode as an episode, then it would be two hundred one. But I didn't count. I didn't count it as an episode on the on the thing. Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, Nobody, uh, we're we're not even really keeping track. But welcome, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm Randall Thor nineteen, man with the million, and with me as always is my co-host of the show, the one and only Jez Corden of Windows Central. What's going on? Hello, friends. I'm here. I'm alive and managed to get through to the week. I'm so glad it's Friday, and I'm probably gonna just lie down and pass out tomorrow. Thank you know, got loads of nice messages this week, so thanks to everyone for that. And uh, saw your videos blowing up pretty hard mm. today, Ram. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of people are interested in what's going on with Activision Blizzard and everything, and it's a good time to come back and actually start making videos again. The month off did did well. I feel really good. The response has been great. You know, people seem to enjoy the content, and uh, it's always fun, man. It's always always fun when there's actually cool stuff to talk about like there has been this whole week and yes. uh whew, the uh <laughs> the hot takes i've seen all over social media um <laughs> have definitely been something uh i can't uh, yeah this is this has to be jazz now i've been doing youtube for this channel in specifically for essentially four years eh, this is new I started, my first video was like the end of 2016, so I guess four and a half years, or this will be the fifth year when I get to the end, right? Um, Even though I I was doing podcasts beforehand, and you've been, you you were working Xbox Mad, and you know, your editor at Windows Central, right? Um, (laughs) With my fat editor salary. This has got to be like the biggest, (laughs) with your fat editor salary, yes, looking down from us. (laughs) From your ivory tower all up above, <laughs> looking down upon us mere mortals and, and YouTubers and fans. Uh, <laughs> this has got to be <laughs> the biggest news week ever, right? Like, how's it been on your end with yeah. uh, on Windows Central? Like, how many articles has your group been basically writing? Uh, it's been... It's oh man, it's been crazy. Like, I don't think... I don't think I've ever gotten so many editorials out of one single topic. I think I wrote, like three or four editorials this week and then all of my colleagues wrote several editorials this week all about the same topic all with different opinions you know all the possibilities like the ip that could be bought the the studios that could be revived the the changing direction the culture improvements all this stuff man it's it's really crazy you know there's a there's a huge amount of stuff going on going down it's going to be a wild couple of years while we wait for all this to go through and then wait for the integration to happen but it's going to be a fun, fun, I use that term loosely, right, <laughs> between now and then, I think. But Rand, <clears throat> before we get started, mm-hmm. there's something we need to talk about. W- I mean, what What do we have to talk I, Are we powered by something, as usual? This stream, this podcast, is once again powered by Manscaped.com. You like Manscaped Rant? Do you want sure. to hear an ad read? Do yeah. Ad read? I mean, look, <clears throat> even I love your ad reads, but what we really need is to get a testimonial from you about how, you know, your balls were coarse <laughs> and hairy and now they're just like smooth <laughs> as, uh, you know, a baby's, baby's bottom and how much your girlfriend is now, her, her love for you has just been reignited. <laughs> Because she's she's fallen back in love. Like, give me it, Jazz. Give me, give me, give me the good stuff. What's going on? Manscaped makes me feel like seventy billion dollars and a whole heap of video game studios coming exclusively to Xbox Game Pass. But Rand, Phil Spencer could have saved twenty percent on that acquisition. That's a lot of money. Twenty percent? That's that'd be a lot. That'd be a lot yeah, of billions. Yeah. 
20 20 percent on 70 billion i i'm not even going to bother trying to do that math because i'm not very good at math i actually failed math at school so let's not do that but 20 percent of 70 billion is quite a lot I mean, there's nothing on manscape that wouldn't that be that like 14 billion, billion? Wow, Rand, 20, Rand with the numbers, Wouldn't that be man. 14 billion? That's a lot. Manscaped would have saved you a lot. Manscaped would have saved Phil a lot. But guys, seriously, um, Manscaped's products are great. We use them. The Xbox 2 is powered by Manscaped. Xbox 2, two testicles, shaved, trimmed, shiny, with the performance package 4.0, the lawnmower trimmer 4.0, amazing boxes, amazing everything. And razors and all kinds of men's grooming products. 20% off at manscaped.com. Free shipping on everything. Use our code, checkout code, XB2, number two, and you get 20% off. <laughs> and that's my haphazard man read. Uh, there we man go. read. Man read? My ad read. Manscaped. Thanks to manscaped.com for powering this podcast. And let's get in to some totally hairless topics right now right right so got a few super chats i want to make mention thank you guys so much for supporting the channel we also right now have um the chat in subscriber mode which jez told me to put on so the only people who can chat are essentially people who have been subscribed for at least five minutes because uh we get a lot of trolls essentially and people that constantly yeah. make new accounts and we figured this would be a good way to negate that so if you want to chat like you know, if, just hit the subscribe button, you know, we figure most people who are watching anyways are subscribed regardless. So, you know, uh, that's the reason why it's on. So yeah. Uh, T dot Tucker says, hashtag get Phil on XB two, make it happen. I mean, I would love to have Phil on here, especially after this deal. Although I don't know how much they could actually it, like, imagine if we got Phil on and we could pick his that brain about this stuff. I don't even know if we could ask him any like specific questions about the Activision Blizzard deal. There'd be other things That's I would true. like to talk about, but um, I would imagine if we did get him on, it'd be like a 30 minute thing, you know, but we'll see if that happens. Uh, Lady Foxfire cool. with the thumbs up emoji and super chat. Thank you so much. Artemis, remember for two months says, Rand, you should change your tag line as the man with 70 billion. Oh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that for like the video on Tuesday. Hmm. Um... Flame says, whoa, 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 Xbox bought Activision Blizzard. How was there no discussion about this whatsoever on social media and news sites? Yeah, right? I think I did see like a news <laughs> aggregator say that there was like 5,000 articles written about this or something. Oh, my God, that's crazy. Or some like ridiculous number. Uh, yeah, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, Sin Vendetta says, happy initial Elden Ring release date. That's right. It's supposed to be, it was supposed to be today. 35 yes. more days till we can wrestle some bears in the lands between Happy Friday, Rand and Jazz. You know, I was talking to Luca before the show. She called me and we were just talking about some stuff. And I asked her because she's a, she's, a, she's a Dark Souls veteran, right? Played all, all right. of them. Uh, we played Demon Souls on the PlayStation 5 and co-op. It was a lot of fun. Um, and she knows I don't really particularly care for Dark Souls. So I asked her, I'm like, you played Elden Ring. She's like, yeah. I'm like... Would I like that? Is that up my alley? And she's like, no, you'd hate it. So now I got Luca telling me that I'm not going to like Elden Ring. So <laughs> my desire to play the game just further dwindles. Further dwindles. Well, you know, you, you're more of a walking simulator kind of guy. You know, when there's a game where you have to actually like do things, you kind of shut down. So I understand that. Oh, please. I understand. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Aragorn says, great show, guys. Do you think Microsoft are gearing up to sidestep PlayStation? Are they gearing up for a post-console war future where game exclusivity is less important to great content? What do you think, Jez? Uh, we'll discuss this more, but I don't think they're trying to sidestep PlayStation. I actually think Microsoft benefits from a strong PlayStation. And I'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but... I don't think they're trying to sidestep PlayStation. I think Sony's going in one direction and Xbox is going in a slightly different direction. Xbox kind of... Xbox is looking more to Tencent. They want to mimic Tencent's business model where Tencent has all these massive service games and they go across all platforms and stuff like that. Call of Duty, more Call of Duty, more Minecraft on everything, you know, kind of thing. 
And then, but they also want to like compete with Sony on the exclusive side of things, which is why I think we'll probably see Diablo Four maybe go exclusive and that kind of you stuff. You sure about, about that? Because I mean, okay. <clears throat> the only way mm-hmm. I, when is Diablo Four coming out? Right? Because is it is this when's Nobody it supposed knows. to hit? Okay. Nobody. Knows. Is there a chance Diablo Four comes out before this deal closes? I mean, because the deal potentially may not close for another 18 months, which is June of next I year. Mean, is there a chance Diablo 3 launches March cool. of 2023 and is just multi-platform? I think there's a chance, yeah. But, like, if Diablo 4 comes out before the deal closes, then Diablo 5, maybe that'll be exclusive. I don't know. But, like, I just meant, like, some of the some of the smaller, smaller-ish kind of franchises that mm-hmm. aren't, like, such a household name. I expect those to go exclusive in a in a in a competitive sort of way, while I think Call of Duty won't go exclusive. No, because mm-hmm. that's like uh, a sort of brand ubiquity kind of thing, like League of Legends. But, yeah, well, you, you can know, you can take your problem, your so. quote unquote victory lap later when we talk about Phil's comments about Call of Duty, because you know when we we originally did the s- surprise podcast or emergency podcast on Tuesday. You uh, you angered some people with your take because you felt that Call of Duty was going to remain multi-platform. Well, I felt that Warzone would remain multi-platform and that the premium yearly release would be Xbox only after the contracts ran out. Ran out. And mm. we, you know, it was like people didn't like that, right? And now with Phil's tweet... People are reading it a million different ways. You got like, you got wordsmiths <laughs> out there like kind of combing through like, well, the word desire means could mean this and this and this and this. And Jez thinks, let me, guys, literally after Phil tweeted what he tweeted, Phil, Jez literally DM me was like, I'm right, bitch. And I was like, <laughs> he's like, I'm like, oh man, you're going to be insufferable on Friday, aren't you? And he's like... <laughs> Yes, I am. So yes, I am. We'll definitely, <clears throat> we're definitely gonna delve into that because there's so even still like even though we talked a lot about this on Tuesday, there's still a lot of stuff that you know has changed since then, and there's other things that have come to light that we can definitely talk about. So um, yeah, uh, Wolf Assassin in the super chat says, "I know we're all excited for Xbox Activision, but any updates on Xbox publishing pro- projects like uh, Dragon, Belfry, Pentiment, Midnight, Sha- uh, Shaolin, or the Kojima game?" Do you have any uh, updates on uh, on any of those, Jez? I have no updates on those, I'm afraid, at the moment. We'll just have to wait and see. I think we'll hear a lot about some of this stuff at E3. Well, well there is no whatever. more E3. When are we going to hear yeah. about this? You know, now that Microsoft <coughs> owns... Now that, we, we, now that Xbox owns Bethesda, <coughs> right? And eventually, oh, they'll have Activision, Blizzard, and King. How are mm. they going to put all this in one show? Like, you have BlizzCon, yeah. you got QuakeCon... You're just gonna have one thing just called a big Xbox con. Like, how would they present all this no, stuff no. in the future? Essentially, when Blizzard starts rolling again, maybe when they take some of the teams off of Call of Duty yearly releases, because there's an article saying that they're thinking about that. You know, like you you have so many companies, you know, working, you know, building games for you. It's like, do you need to have multiple events now instead of just one? Like, do you need to have one at one point in the year and one at the one uh, yeah, end point of the year? Like, how do you think that's gonna go well, about? I think you have to. What you have to do here is look at the organizational chart that Microsoft shared in that initial blog post. Xbox is now a subdivision of Microsoft Gaming, okay. so I think what they'll do is they'll keep Xbox Publishing and Xbox Game Studios as one entity. And then they'll keep Activision Blizzard. Oh, no. Well, actually, they'll keep Activision. I think they'll separate Activision and Blizzard. They'll have Activision as an entity. They'll have all the Bethesda, Zenimax stuff as one entity. And they'll have Blizzard as one entity. And I think they'll keep them all as sort of, for managerial reasons more than anything. Can you imagine, like, Matt Booty trying to oversee all of that? I think, like, each of those divisions needs its own captain, basically. I think what you'll have Mikey Barra running Blizzard. You'll have someone else running Activision, not Kotick, thank God. You'll have, um, you, you know, you'll have Todd running Bethesda, and you'll have Matt Booty running Xbox Game Studios, and then you'll have well, who, that's who runs Bethesda? It? Todd. Okay, you, does he? I thought. Uh, I thought. Or, Rob, or, I thought uh, Robert Alton's yeah, son runs Bethesda. Yeah, 
whoever, whoever else, you know. Okay, let me ask you this, though. Interesting question <clears throat> here. Uh, we talked about in the last podcast, uh, you know, potential acquisitions past this, like with teams Microsoft are kind of nurturing and seeing what's going on, like Crystal Dynamics and IO Interactive. Now, let's say hypothetically in the future, Microsoft enters an agreement to buy IO Interactive. Now you have these different wings. You got Xbox Game Studios under Matt Booty. You got Bethesda. And you have Activision Blizzard. Where would you slot IO Interactive under? Would you put them under Xbox Game Studios and Matt Booty? Would you put them under Bethesda? Would you put them under... Oh, would you put them under Activision Blizzard? Because then it's like... Since... Could Bethesda <laughs> make the acquisition in that sense? Where it's like Bethesda is acquiring IO Interactive? Or Activision Blizzard is acquiring IO Interactive? But then, you know, there's... Subs- you know what I'm saying? Instead of just it's Microsoft, crazy. Instead of Microsoft, think, essentially? I think IO and Crystal would go under Xbox quote unquote under xbox but like io is a ma- becoming a massive studio they're like a multi-studio studio now they just opened io barcelona i think off the top of my head and some people in chat uh oh actually it was samuel samuel tolbert my colleague on windows central yeah what's up sam james altman runs bethesda softworks yeah i i knew i knew it wasn't todd he's like the studio head right but um or the studio director but um but that's what i mean like you have separate organizations and i think each organization will have its own show much like we have mm. minecon is separate from the xbox game studios presentation typically so you'll have minecon quakecon bethesda showcase and then blizzcon and then xbox game showcase the pro they maybe they'll just bring back xo right maybe put xo in the summer if e3 is dead put xo in the summer make xo the xbox game studios presentation and do it that way and I think that's how they'll probably do it because sort of similar how Tencent do it. Like you don't have, there's no like Tencent con, but there's things like, you know, the Riot, Riot is separate and then, you know, Grinding Gear is separate. Path of Exile does its own thing and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I think they're all going to be, they're all going to be segmented out and separated and they'll all have their own shows. But okay. that was uh, just looping back around to your other question. But what, what was this new question on, uh, on where you put IO Interactive? I think they'd go under Xbox, really. You think they'd um, just put them under ga- on Xbox Game Studios? Yeah, I think they would, yeah. I mean, Xbox Game Studios is getting pretty big in its own right. That's what I'm but saying. I think, like, you know, I think, yeah. But all, all those studios collectively are just sort of like, they, they can kind of run themselves, right? And I think that's sort of what Phil's going for here is that the studios have the creative freedom to do whatever they want, like Mojang kind of does. And um, and they just want to provide the resources for them to grow and realize their creative ambitions. And I do believe Phil when he says that, you know. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see how it pans out. I think it's going to be amazing to separate Blizzard and Activision into separate entities, give Activision Studios the creative the, the freedom to be creative like they used to be, like Toys for Bob is supporting Call of Duty right now. That's just that's just wild to me. After they did like Skylanders and Crash and stuff like that. It's wild to me that they're they're having to support annualized releases of card. Like switch card to a uh, your biannual releases instead and let creativity flourish. And I think that's what Phil will do and it's gonna be great. Right. Personally. <clears throat> what do you think? Uh, well what do you think though? What would you do with IO? I Crystal? interesting. I'd probably put them under Xbox Game Studios, personally. But tidy, right? Yeah, I mean, but then you, you know, Bethesda's made acquisitions before, so it's like, could Bethesda essentially acquire somebody? You know, they mm. they would have a budget. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, who knows how this? Because like, you have Embracer. Embracer has certain uh, other subsidiaries who then will then go and acquire th- stuff on you know and, well, like Koch Media stuff. Yeah, so uh, it'd be interesting Koch. to see how that plan uh, how that plays out. So Nightwolf in the super chat yeah. says, uh, "Random Jazz, I'm curious if you guys, I'm curious if you guys could drive down Speculation Road. Well, we we like driving down Speculation Road, and discuss what we could possibly yes, we see do. from all these new possible IP, uh, new possible IPs, new open world Transformers." From High Moon is my thoughts. Well, I'm with you there. I love High Moon Studios. They made some great Transformers games. Um, I think Microsoft would have to change their stance on licensed properties, though. Microsoft tends not to to delve into that business very often. Um, I think they would much rather have High Moon make something else. 
I can't imagine them being pulled off Call of Duty to work on a licensed Transformers game. Can you, Jez? I mean, I think I I imagine what's going to happen is they're gonna they're gonna fire Kotick out of a metaphorical cannon, and then Phil's gonna literally sit down, or Phil or one of Phil's subordinates is gonna sit down with all the studios and be like, "What do you want to do? What would make you guys happy?" And if they're like, "Yeah, we wanna we wanna work on a Transformers game." I think Phil would let that happen and make that happen, you know? And I think if enough enough fans set up and say, we want a sequel to this Transformers game, I think it could happen. Ultimately, they they follow what the fans want to some degree, you know? So um, I, think, uh, I think that's what will happen. So if you want a Transformers, make a lot of noise about it. I personally haven't played the, the original, and I do think Transformers is one IP that is severely underutilized in gaming. I mean, it could be as big as Spider-Man if a company pulled it off right. You know, you got your cars and your vehicles and your tanks and your planes and all this stuff at the same time as, you know, these iconic characters. Get all the some of the original voice actors back if if they're still alive. <laughs> and um, you know, give me give me 80s Transformers game that's high quality with Unreal Engine 5. I think that would be sick with environmental destruction and all that stuff. Could be cool, man. But, you know, if people need to kick up kick up the noise about it, you know, like people are making noise about Killer Instinct and people are making noise about some of the other games people want to see. So people made noise about Fable and we got Fable coming back. That's true. So um, so yeah, kick kick up some noise about it and maybe it'll happen. Yeah, I mean, Phil did have an interview which we'll talk about where he mentioned some of the Activision IP and games and franchises of his childhood that he liked to see come you know come back and. I mean, I think I think we will see some of that stuff come back. It's a question of which one and who's going to make it. Uh, Humdrum says, hot take. Phil's making a mistake. Call of Duty should be exclusive. Mm. You know, one of the things I, I, I am not looking forward to is the next 18 months of discussions about whether or not what Phil's tweet means and what the status of Call of Duty exclusivity is. I didn't enjoy it with Bethesda because that was just... <laughs> grading and is even more grading because like it because like I was in the camp of like of course they're going to be exclusive it makes the most sense and then we were told that they were going to be exclusive and it was just like okay well we kind of know and then what we were told ended up happening so I was like oh man you know six months of just listening to this it was just wasn't fun right Uh, um and now you have to listen to 18 more months of this stuff. It's specifically yep. about... You know what's funny is that nobody cares about Diablo or Overwatch 2 or World of Warcraft going exclusive. Like, nobody. Like, nobody's talking about that. It's literally Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Uh, but with Bethesda, it was, it, it was everything. Like, it was all the games. So I'm not really looking forward to the next 18 months because there's going like, to be quotes... Like, Phil's going to say something, somebody's going to say something to Activision, somebody else is going to say something at Xbox, and, like, remember, because, like, I think Tim Stewart kind of said something, it was like, oh, I remember, because Tim Stewart said something that kind of was contradictory to what Phil was saying, where it was like, well, we're just going to make sure they're best on Xbox, and people were like, that's proof that they're going to be multi-platform, and then, you know, Phil said what he said at the at the the Bethesda round table and it was like, okay, well, and even still people after the round table were like, well, he did say, you know, like leaving the, the, the space open to get games on PlayStation. So it's just like, Oh, I'm not looking forward to this jazz whatsoever. I don't <laughs> like, <sighs> I think, I think Xbox fans should get behind it being multi-platform. Oh really? Personally. Yeah. And I know it's not going to be a popular take, because, you know, a lot of people would say Sony wouldn't do the same. And I agree. Sony wouldn't do the same. Call of Duty would totally go exclusive to PlayStation if the shoe was on the other foot. But it's a different, it's a different kettle of fish because Microsoft is a massive corporation. They literally dropped $70 billion in cash to buy this studio. Microsoft's playing at a level that no other company can play at. And I feel like... It's punching down. It is punching down if they 
make that game exclusive. Call of Duty is a ritual. I said this to you before the show. Yeah, you did. It's Elder Scrolls is not a ritual. Like it's a it's a beloved game, and we all love Elder Scrolls. People on this show, but Elder Scrolls games are like once once a decade, basically. You know, it's once a decade kind of game. Um, Call of Duty is an annualized ritual. Every year, a kid goes to their parents and says, "Mommy, mommy, can I have Call of Duty for Christmas?" And I don't think it's in Phil's mentality to take that ritual away from millions of people. I don't think it's in Phil's mentality. It's what it's. They didn't take Minecraft away. Minecraft is a ritual. Call of Duty is a ritual, and I think exclusivity enough. Um, being being on being on Xbox Game Pass is enough of an exclusivity value proposition for Call of Duty. I don't think they should make Call of Duty exclusive. It's going to make them look bad. It's going to make them look bad politically. It's gonna. It's gonna. You know, bring up. A, those antitrust arguments, it's not going to win them any political allies. It's all about Call of Duty. And I think Microsoft could save themselves a lot of pain, a lot of pain by keeping that game multi-platform. And I think they will. I think they will keep it. You know, and a lot of people are saying it's business, not feelings. Fair enough. You're talking nonsense, Jez. It should be exclusive. I, I get that. And, you know, Microsoft wouldn't lose much money from making it exclusive because Sony charges a tax on all the microtransactions and the games being sold. They also charge a tax on cross-play, which a lot of people forget. A lot of people forget that. And um, and uh, so after you factor in the tax on cross-play and the tax on the store, the, the money hitting, um, the money hitting uh, Microsoft's account is not that much. So, you know, if you convert those players to Game Pass people, then great. But I think the argument of... Call of Duty being on the cloud is fine and accessible. I think that works for games like Elder Scrolls and Starfield because they're slower paced games and they're not they're not going to be like so reactive as Call of Duty. I don't think Call of Duty works in the cloud on today's internet infrastructure. I think they should keep those games multi-platform. And I'm getting dragged in the chat. I, and I, it's told, fine. I told it's you fine. I told you you were gonna get dragged in the chat. I I've, told you. I I I, I, I think I knew I knew I would well, be. I knew it would be, and it's fine. You'll hear fine. you, you, you hear me. my argument when we talk about the Phil thing because, <laughs> yeah, like I know Phil is a nice guy, right? Phil's uh, a lovely, I've been benevolent. Friend, I've been friends with Phil for 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 years now. Phil Phil's really nice dude, right? He's done a lot for me personally. I'm very biased towards Phil because he's helped me a lot in a lot of things, and I do sort of feel that like he doesn't like he does want to keep call of duty on there right like he does kind of what you're you're talking about but it's business it's war essentially as some people would say <laughs> especially it's if war. especially if play if, if the shoe was on the other foot and playstation acquired activision blizzard um i tell you what like unless the government forced playstation to keep call of duty on xbox like call of duty would like Phil, you know how Phil said he <laughs> called, you know, the leadership over. Like Phil dials, it's like, let me like get my phone book out. I'm like, all right, Jim Ryan, what's up, Jimbo? Yeah, what's going on? We just bought Activision Blizzard. Oh, you're concerned about losing the biggest uh, game in, that you have right now? Yeah, you know, well, I'm a nice guy. We we can keep it on there. If the shoe was on the other foot, Jim mm-hmm. Ryan wouldn't even call Phil. And if Phil called no, Jim Ryan. To, to to ask about that the phone he would pick up the phone and jim ryan would literally just be laughing at him because you know what i mean like i just feel that like sony sony's all about that like sony would go out there and get timed exclusivity on final fantasy 7 remake 2 and death loop and all these games to basically uh to kind of uh, you know ensure their 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 platform dominance, especially early in the generation, and to keep certain genres like them, essentially, <laughs> them keeping Street Fighter was it five exclusive to the PlayStation Four basically killed the entire fighting game genre on Xbox One, right? Mm-hmm. And if yeah. the opportunity presented itself to keep Call of Duty exclusive to PlayStation, PlayStation would take it. So, like, 
Yeah, look, I mean, look, I know, look, I know, I know. Sony, Sony wouldn't, Sony wouldn't. They would kill Xbox. But the thing is, man, Microsoft's trying to be a technological leader. Sony's entire business basically is PlayStation at this point. Their entire business. So Sony has to be ruthless. I think Microsoft can take a higher, higher road. They can take the come by our approach and be like, we're not such a bad guy, you know? Come here, PlayStation, we'll help you out. Here's Call of Duty. Maybe we'll throw you a, a remake of an older game, you know, stuff like that. But, dudes, the real reason I want Sony to be okay and strong is selfish, kind of. Because I think if, if, you, if you take Call of Duty, if you take Call of Duty from Sony... If you take Call of Duty from Sony, you make Sony weaker. You you tank their share price. You make Sony an acquisition target. Now, the one thing you don't want is a Tencent-owned Sony. You don't want an Apple-owned Sony. You don't want a Google or Amazon-owned Sony. Because that's when you start to get a less competitive... You either get a less competitive industry or you get more consolidation, right? It's in... Microsoft's interests to keep PlayStation strong because if one of their competitors get PlayStation, either you do get more consolidation, less creativity, higher prices, or you get Apple buying up everything and starting to get really serious about it. If a Apple has $200 billion in liquid cash, Apple has $200 billion in cash, right? Apple could buy Sony tomorrow. Apple could walk to Sony HQ and be like, we'll give you $100 billion. You know, like give them $100 billion. And then we get Apple either destroying Sony and leading to a less competitive industry, or we get Apple buying up everyone. And then we'll be in a situation where we only have Apple and Microsoft, you know? So, you know, a lot of people are dragging me in the chat, but I think this is, this is ultimately having a strong Sony helps Microsoft. I mean... And um, that he Phil did bring that up in that Washington Post article where he mentioned that like he's not worried about Nintendo because they never would do anything to harm the video game business because it's a business they're in. And the same thing with Sony. And then he mentioned like Google and Amazon. So you you're thinking here, okay? So let me get this straight. Your thought process here, and don't worry, I'll get to all the super chats. I see them all coming in. People probably dragging you in the super <laughs> chats, and I can't wait to read them. So you're thinking that right here, that Phil is going to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation as 4D chess. Because 4D, if he chess, removes baby. Call of Duty from PlayStation, <laughs> then Sony stock is going to tumble so badly that Netflix or Amazon, because Netflix, they, they had their quarter report. Ooh. They said they're getting big into games. That like Netflix, Amazon, or Google, or Apple will then swoop in the same way Xbox swooped in to buy uh, Activision because their stock price was so low. So you think this is all just a, a, a 4D chess maneuver by Phil to make sure one of his true competitors doesn't buy PlayStation. I think, I th yeah. I mean, that Phil, Phil doesn't lie, right? He doesn't make shit up. And when he talks about in interviews that he wants PlayStation to be valued, he, he values play, his relationship with PlayStation. He means it. He means it. And he means it because he wants to preserve the gaming status quo as it is, the, core, the whole core experience. For years, Rand, people were saying free-to-play mobile gaming, Apple's wheelhouse, was going to kill console gaming. For years, people were saying that. It didn't happen because core gamers are older, they have a lot of money, and they spend a lot of money, right? But there's still this mentality that there's a load of risk attached to core gaming. You have to invest a ton up front and, you know, and then there's all these like extra problems on that part on top of it. If a game fails, like Battlefield 2042 fails, it's, it's, it's disastrous on a quarterly revenue report. Less disastrous so if you're making a crappy mobile game like Candy Crush, which by the way, pulls in like $300 million a quarter. You know, even though it's literally just tapping the screen on some bits of candy. So you don't want a company like Apple or Google controlling what core gaming looks like. What Phil said in his interview was these big tech companies don't understand gaming, right? And Phil's concern as a gamer 
is that one of these big tech companies could buy PlayStation and then basically ruin core gaming, ruin what makes core gaming great. So that's why I think Microsoft wants to keep the status quo. And I think that's why Microsoft will keep Call of Duty on PlayStation because it stops Apple and Google and Tencent. Yeah. Yeah. So drag me. Drag me. I thrive on the hatred. Do you not know I thrive on hatred after this week? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> you, okay. Okay, I mean. Let me read some I, let me read some of these super chats because I'm sure people are dragging it. I want I want to read some of this stuff. Elliot says, yeah. "You guys see the new headline from Cal Moriarty for his podcast. It's pretty nuts." Hashtag salt. I did see that. I don't just I don't I don't agree with Colin. Well, I didn't listen to the podcast, so I did see his tweet where he said it's bad for creativity, bad for devs and bad for players. I disagree on all three. It's definitely not bad for players because you're going to get all those games and game pass for cheap. I don't know how that's bad for players. It's not bad for, for devs because that's like the idea that it's bad for devs is like, well then is it good for the devs of Activision Blizzard right now and the situation that they've been in for years? No, because it's only going to get better. So it's actually better for players and better for devs. And the idea that it's bad for creativity is just ridiculous because the creativity and the type of games that Activision Blizzard have been making over the course of years has basically kind of been creatively creatively bankrupt. So Sh- the I- like World of Warcraft Shadowlands had basically all the same systems as the previous expansion, just with a new skin, which it, it reminded me a lot of how they do Call of Duty. So I think. Um, the, the, the take that it's going to stifle creativity is asinine. Well, no, so it's like, the, I think the only thing, it's going to improve creativity because I think they'll get away from the annual Call of Duty cycle. I think the Call of Duty games yeah. will become better. I think you'll see actually other games, Activision start to make other games where it was only Call of Duty, but I think they'll go and they'll start making some of their uh, other games from their portfolio, whether it's a new, a new Crash or a new Spyro or something, Hexen or whatever, right? Like... And I think they can help Blizzard regain their glory. So, like, the idea that it's bad for creativity and bad for players and bad for devs, I think is just the wrong take. And I understand, you know, he's a PlayStation dude. And I've listened to his podcast to to hear his points. But, like, just the tweet itself, I was like, I disagree on all three. Like, I understand, like, big corporate consolidation is, is you know, has its, uh, you know, minuses, right? It has pros and cons. And... I, 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 not, and everything is always like, you know, rainbows and roses and rainbows and whatever. Like I get it. But like, I just saw that tweet and I was just like, yeah, I disagree with, with this whole yeah. thing. And I, and, and personally, I like, I like Colin, I like him, but I disagree too. And, um, you know, but I can understand if you're, if you're, if you're someone in a position that, you know, benefits from PlayStation being strong, that, and you know you enjoy PlayStation, and you're a fan of PlayStation. That th- this is going to rile you, you know. If I, if if Bli- if it was Blizzard at its height, and Sony had stepped in and done this, I would be pretty like, oh my god, this sucks, you know. And also like thinking of it objectively, even though I don't really like Call of Duty these days, I'd be thinking like, my god, Xbox losing Call of Duty is going to be a big deal. Like Xbox is in the the weak position, quote unquote, right now. But it's less of a big deal for Xbox because Xbox at least has Halo, you know, and that can like go harder on make building Halo up as a real competitor if Call of Duty did go. But Call of Duty going exclusive to Xbox leaves Sony with basically Fortnite, you know, Fortnite and Warzone, you know. Um, so I can understand some of the concerns, but I think some of the stuff is just imagining the worst possible case scenario. The worst possible case scenario being that Microsoft makes things worse. And um, we've seen no evidence that Phil Spencer's Microsoft does that. We've seen no evidence of it so far. So it's predicting it in the negative light, whereas we predict it in the positive light. Ultimately, we don't know how it's going to go. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. um, Let's see. I'm going to take more of this people dragging you in the super chats. I love it. (laughs) Uh, Forte, our buddy gaming Forte says, sup, Rand and Jez, how are we feeling on this wonderful Friday? I'm doing great. I'm doing great because the Xbox two will see me through with the uh, green heart. Uh, I'm doing pretty good, man. It's, uh, it's definitely an interesting week. 
Uh, good to see you in chat as well, as always, my friend. Gunstar, with his new puppy, says, love you guys, and we love you. Uh, Jacqueline says, Jez, can you clarify something? This deal has been in the works for a year, but you have paperwork showing that Xbox trying to acquire three WB Studios, so were those in tandem. Uh, I don't think this deal was in the works for a year. I think this deal, from all the reports I've read, said started maybe in October? And... Um... Well, even still, I never had evidence that Microsoft was trying to acquire Warner Brothers. What I had was evidence that Warner Brothers was trying to sell NetherRealm. So I have I have no evidence that Microsoft was trying to buy them, although it, it did lend some credence to some of the rumors at the time. But I never had evidence of that. I had evidence that the Warner Brothers had structured some things in such a way that... Um, I can't remember the name of the Lego studio again, but NetherRealm and the Lego studio were structured yeah, that they could be spun out. Yeah, Traveler's Tale, uh, Traveler's NetherRealm, Tale, and like the mobile studio that EA bought, I believe it was, right? Yeah. So then when, when EA bought the mobile studio, I was like, oh, that proves that document was real, you know. But whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Snow Dragon says, Snow Dragon says, Black and Cod on PS5 doesn't affect me. Strong strong arm when you get playstation exclusive games and xbox does i aim for that negotiation or i am for that nego- negotiation andrew says jez i know you're taking some heat since yesterday and he's taking some heat today in the chat man the chat is going after <laughs> jez right now and i'm i'm here for it i am totally here for it oh man but i truly I just, do I enjoy getting, i'm please no bully no bully if you, any if anybody's listening to this later on spotify or uh google play or itunes and it's just also getting angry and cursing out Jez, make sure you tweet him and DM him when you're listening to this. Be like, Jez, wow. you couldn't be more wrong. Like, wow. just just keep on dragging, Jez. <laughs> just he got he got wow. dragged all over Twitter yesterday, and now he's getting triggered. Now he's getting dragged by his own people in the Xbox Two chat. Back to back days. Who would have ever oh, seen this back happening? Back to back dragon. Life's such a drag. Yeah. To paraphrase C three PO. Um, but yeah, he, 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 uh, Andrew says he enjoy he, uh, he knows you're taking some heat and he, but he truly does enjoy your takes and he likes how you brutally honest are you with your opinions. Thank uh, you, brother. B Martin says Xbox will make Call of Duty great again. Jacob says, I agree, Jez, because if not, the court gets harder to win. Uh, BC says E3 will now be known as XE, Xbox Expo. Moving forward, Toys for Bob and Banjo, please. Thanks for all the covers this week, both you guys. Both you doing God's work. Well, we uh, we we love the fact that you're enjoying our work. I don't, you know, like Jez writes amazing articles. I just make shitty YouTube videos, you know. Uh, you when, make amazing YouTube videos, and I make shitty articles. You know, when That's people when real. people talk about this podcast, they always refer to it as Jez Corden's Xbox Two podcast, right? Don't be silly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Xbox Two, man. It can't um, be the Xbox One. Xbox One was not good. That nerd, <laughs> that nerd GIU says chances that Sarah Bond end up head of Activision. Mm. 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 Maybe. Interesting. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It almost seems like they're grooming her for the role of eventually CEO of Microsoft Gaming once Phil leaves. Eventually. Because he's not going to be here forever. So somebody's got to replace Phil. Phil is freaking CEO of Microsoft Gaming after the restructuring. Like how baller is that? That's so baller. That's so, and uh, like, how baller was that in the uh, the little letter he wrote under the Newswire where he's like, when the deal closes, Activision Blizzard will report to me, CEO, Microsoft Gaming. Like, <laughs> Wait, uh, why didn't he just rebrand himself to CEO of gaming? Just yeah. all gaming. I don't know. It's it's interesting because like, I was like, man, has Microsoft ever had two CEOs before? But um, the answer is yes. The other C, the, there's three CEOs at Microsoft, and the other is CEO for LinkedIn, which is really random. Mm. Um, yeah, you on LinkedIn, Rand? You I'm not on LinkedIn? LinkedIn. No, I'm not. Are you? I am on LinkedIn, but I don't really use it. I don't. LinkedIn Premium should be part of Xbox Game Pass. I think I'm gonna tweet that out right now. Actually, everything should be part of Game Pass, right? Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Uh, Forte once again he says I desire my friends of the Xbox 2 to carry your pigeon me a new puppy namely a beagle for my birthday hurry you only have a few months left to save ah, and you know he put desire in quotes Jez so <laughs> he did. You, know, you know what that's going after desire is uh, going to be a 
you know, in in a year, in like months from now, like the most the most Googled word for the definition will be desire because people are gonna be like, what does this word mean? And we're gonna we're gonna delve into that later. Uh, SMF Vengeance says, I know this is about Xbox, but do you think Sony will try to get Bandai Namco and Capcom and capitalize on the fighting genre? Um, I mean, it's certainly possible PlayStation responds. Maybe they don't now with. Like, if you assume what Phil says is 100% true, right? Like, let's hypothetically assume that Phil's comment about their desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation is him being truthful and not being, like, vague on purpose, and that Call of Duty does remain on PlayStation. Maybe that drives down Sony's desire. You see what I I did there? To... uh, counterattack in a certain way by buying another publisher where they're like, well, they just got, we still, we're still getting call of duty. So maybe we don't have to spend a whole bunch of money on something that we don't necessarily need. Um, you know, I, I, I did hear, uh, jazz that, uh, there has been plenty of emergency, emergency meetings at PlayStation this week. Mm. Uh, plenty of, 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 of all hands on deck and uh what what's going on and uh not only at playstation but other publishers as well uh emergency meetings across the board it's It's crazy so absolutely crazy yeah um i mean there was street fighter 6 i think is the next street fighter we know that sony bought evo Maybe they cut a deal for Street Fighter VI and the fighting genre is basically on PlayStation. Again, you don't necessarily need Capcom to do that. Um, Bandai Namco is a little bit more expensive. To me, if if you're looking at Sony to buy a publisher to quote-unquote strike back, it would be one they probably work with a lot, which would be like Square Enix. I mean, they basically get all the games from them exclusive anyways. So maybe they... All right, let's just solidify a relationship and now square enix is part of playstation um who knows i don't know i could see sony doing nothing besides kind of the track that they're on just kind of take the studios that they're working with like jade raymond's new studio and the devotion studio and some of those other ones that they're um they don't own but they're doing a game with and then being like okay we like what you're doing we'll purchase you just like they did house mark and um and uh, what's the other one? Blue Point and stuff like that. So who knows how Sony will respond? I mean, who knows how EA will respond? Because EA's also got to be looking at it like, like okay, well, <laughs> do we need to like strengthen our position by buying somebody? You know, will we see like yeah. a, a Ubisoft EA like merger to, you know, like, oh my God, you know, some, some along Horror. those lines, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't wow. know. The, the video game industry is literally changed forever this week. It has. It's changed forever. Changed forever. It's um, crazy. Like I saw a bunch of those publishers' stocks went up after this acquisition, like EA and stuff like that, because people were like, "Oh God, I want to be, I want to be, you know, investing in EA if they're going to get bought out as well." I do think we'll see another big publisher drop soon. I think, like, I think Take Two could get purchased. Oh man, I think. Take Two. Even though they, j- let me ask you this: Do you think Take Two was? Do you think Take Two was clued in on this happening, and they're just like? Get Zigna before their stock price inf- inflates, because uh, no. oh yeah, good point, good point, yeah. Before before the inf- before it blows up, because you would imagine yeah, I... if if Xbox bought the Activision th- Blizzard King thing before they bought Zigna, Zigna's stock price probably would have went up and it would have cost Take Two a lot more, right? Isn't it Zynga? Well, whatever, however you say it. You not you're not Farmville fan? I, I no, I've never played Farmville. Have you played Farmville? I've... I thought you liked games with ponies in them. Uh, did you get Did you get my uh, Did you watch the video I linked to you about uh, Peppa the Pig, the next gen edition coming to Xbox? Oh yeah, Series X. <laughs> That's amazing. Peppa Pig, Series Peppa Pig, Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig. Peppa, have you reviewed Peppa Pig yet? No, not yet, not yet. Uh, um, we, should, we, we should like we should pep, put Peppa Pig footage in in one of the in one of the the Xbox Two streams one day. But um, I don't know, man. It's it's just wild, like processing this week has just been so hard so long i I like i get i get insomnia really badly right and when i got when i got stuff on my mind i just can't sleep i've had like four hours sleep every day this week i am so so tired 
because I just sit there thinking of all the possibilities, like the IP that could be brought back, the creative creative freedom, like how it could fix World of Warcraft, my most beloved, most hated game at the same time. You know, I just it's just crazy, man. But I, I do think we're going to see more consolidation. I do think we're going to see Take Two. I do think we're going to see EA. Maybe even like I do think we're going to see Take Two and probably Ubisoft get acquired eventually because there are these mega tech companies who have got billions of dollars in cash losing value due to unprecedented inflation right now and inflation is not going to stop the whole world is you know seeing inflation due to like supply chain disruption pockets of covid popping up all over the place and all that kind of crap so like if you if you if you're a company with like 200 billion dollars in the bank like your apples and your googles it's kind of like we should spend this money before it loses bloody value. So you've got like Amazon who's trying to build a streaming service. And Microsoft sent a, a, a message to them companies this week. And they're like, Amazon, if you want to build Amazon Luna as a credible service, you've got to spend the money. Because this is the kind of money you need to spend to compete in this business. You're not just competing with PlayStation Nintendo. You're competing with, you're competing with Steam. But you're also competing with like other other entertainment things like you can only watch so many screens at a time you can only watch like you can't play net well i suppose you can watch netflix and play a game at the same time but most people probably don't you know and you can only be subscribed to so many services at once if you're like a person on like an average income you know um so content is king right now and amazon like they're pushing that whole prime thing and they're, they're trying to grow that and they spend an enormous amount of money on amazon prime video content for that stuff and um, <clears throat> if, they're, if they're serious about Amazon Luna, they need to buy a publisher. They've got the money to do it. You know, like HK Gaming in the, set, in the chat says, Amazon Ubisoft takeover imminent. Yeah, it's going to happen, man. It's going to mm. happen. It's going to be a spicy year for acquisitions, I think. Yeah. Um, Nightwolf says, the new ritual is Warzone, not multiplayer in my opinion, which is why I believe there's a chance we will see some exclusivity. The Intern of War in the Super Chat says, of course, it's going to be on PlayStation because COD Multiplayer is going the Halo Infinite route. Zero Myth says, Call of Duty and Warzone should remain multi-platform. What Xbox Microsoft should do is end the yearly DLC marketing that Sony gets and online DLC exclusivity. Joel Reese says, 100% behind Jazz. 100% correct. Well, you got, you got somebody supporting you here, Jazz. Even though the rest of the chat is <laughs> not with you. Uh-oh. Uh, Smelly uh, Wrestling Geek says, with the news that they may stop making COD annually, do you think it and other big games such as Gears and the next fours that take the Halo Infinite 10-year approach? Possibly, because like, we see a lot of games already doing the 10-year approach or games as a service, right? Live service. Fortnite, yeah. uh, continually updated. Minecraft. Or you can maybe even argue Minecraft was the first one. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege, players, right? Rainbow Six Siege, Grand Theft Auto Online, Red Dead Redemption Two Online, or Red Dead Online, or whatever, you, however they call it. Uh, Halo Infinite. I think the Forza Motorsports going to be a platform. Uh, Warzone is obviously going to be a platform. It's almost like if you're a multiplayer game in this day and age, you need to sort of be that. And maybe that's one of the reasons outside of, like, the game not being very good, but Battlefield 2042 uh, is is not doing very well. Like, EA, I did, I saw Tom Henderson say, like, EA is really disappointed in the performance of Battlefield 2042, and they might turn it into free-to-play. Yeah. It seems like if you're not free-to-play yeah. at this point for multiplayer, then people don't care. I, so, um, it's possible. Mm-hmm. Gears, I, I don't know. Like, I think they'll do Gear 6, and it won't be a 10-year thing. Because honestly, I don't think Gears has the fan base to last in more than two years, anyways. Um, and uh, I, I think you. I mean it's true. I mean, I, I hate, you say I what you. you say what you want, but like my <laughs> my dream is for the coalition to finish the trilogy with Gear Six and then <sighs> never do a Gears game again. Like they could do uh, other stories. Yeah. They could do other stories in the Gears universe, but get Stop. away from Ge- like because when you, even, when, even when you look Stop at it talking. right now, when you look at like look at the franchises Xbox have, oh, and I man. know Crispy Bomb and Chat's gonna disagree with me because he loves Gears, but like 
There are so many franchises that are, that are just higher than Gears at this point. And when you include the Bethesda and the, um, the the Activision stuff, where it's just like, yeah, you know, Gears at one point was like, Gears was the stalwart for this Xbox One generation. But at this point, does it even make the top 10 anymore? Probably not. You might as well just do this, close out the franchise, get Coalition moving on some brand new huge IP thing. And start the ball rolling because honestly, Gears has just been on the downward trend since Gears uh-uh. Three. Nope, nope, nope. The problem with Gears is that it's the same game every year, year in, year out. It uses the same animations and everything. It uses the same chainsaw animation for the last like ten million games. Gears needs some real revitalization with new mechanics and all that kind of stuff and a new engine. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to write about this at some point. We don't need to go into this now. About how wrong you are. You know what? I'm, I, I'm just doing that because what? I'm trolling you and I'm trolling Crispy <laughs> and I'm trolling Lady Foxfire in the chat. Like, I, trust me, I want, I like Gears a lot. I want to see Gear 6, but I also want to see whatever new thing they're making at the Coalition. So don't worry. I, I'm just trolling you guys. So <laughs> this, yeah. But I do, I, I do think you want Coalition. To do, Jez, hold on really quickly. I'm okay. doing this because I had to endure like four fucking years of. Of you talking shit about Halo. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm going to give it back to you real good there. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, okay. Is that, is that how it is? Yes, I mean, at least, at least Gears of War can launch with co-op. You know, you know, at least, hey, Gears of War didn't work right for the first week because they tied the single player to the servers. Halo Infinite worked day one with more people playing. What? But it didn't have co-op. So, screw you. But anyway, I do, I do think, like... I do think the gears could use at least a break or something, but it's this uh, this acquisition opens up so many interesting opportunities. And one thing that I've seen people say repeatedly: bring back StarCraft Ghost and give it to the Coalition. You know, a, a Space Marine, Space Marines and stuff from uh, StarCraft. They basically look like cogs anyway. <laughs> you could basically use the same engine. And just sort of, you know, add more mechanics and do all kinds of cool stuff. Let me play a fire Batman with a with a huge flamethrower burning down all the Zerg. StarCraft as a third person shooter would be amazing. An Unreal Engine five? That would be incredible. So <laughs> I don't know. Man, people are out here saying I work for Sony, man. Tell yeah. us you're a spy. <laughs> I'm a Sony spy. All this time. This whole time. Okay. Uh, Artemis says, if COD stays multiplayer <clears throat> as is, what is the incentive for Microsoft when PlayStation is gatekeeping games like Persona, Final Fantasy, and Street Fighter? Yeah, wh- what answer you got to that, Jez? Huh? 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 Uh, huh? Look, man. Look, man. Phil's a nice guy. He's just a nice guy. That's why. Okay. That's... 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 He, that's... Don't... Don't be upset, guys, because that's exactly the answer what Jez said to me. He's like, it's all because Phil's nice. I'm like, well, is that the business decision? Yeah, Phil's just a nice guy. Okay. Um, Phil, Phil's a nice guy, man. And that, that's 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 all you need to know. He's a nice guy. Fletch says, release <laughs> Call of Duty and Game Pass one month early and exclusive content in Game Pass. That will be enough. Everything else should be exclusive, though. Uh, Onyx says, kids have to get a PS5 to play Spider-Man. Not fair. Space Dovakin says, Xbox fans need to understand that this acquisition has to go through clean and fast. The fact That fact alone of owning COD and Game Pass is a massive W for Xbox. Kova says, Phil's desire to put Game Pass on PlayStation, and that is the only way they will we'll get mainline COD. Z Black Rider says, Simple solution, let Treyarch or Sledgehammer develop COD competition for Xbox. Ashes to Ashes mm. says, To Jez's point, if Xbox used the inclusion of COD and Game Pass and using Game Pass Ultimate perks as exclusive content drops for the game, that would work. Uh, Brett says, over a seven-year period, Xbox is facing a decision to make another, to make either $20 billion by making COD exclusive or $6 billion over the same period on PlayStation. Uh, Joe says, why not have the Game Pass app on PlayStation 5 just like Netflix? That way you're not taking anything. It's a win-win. Uh, BC says no crossplay tax if it's not on Sony Jazz. Mm, see, Nightwolf says Microsoft has mm. taken the whole "we're not such a bad guy" route their their whole tenure, and where has that got them? So if they get hate for this, what's changed? Yeah, Jazz, what do you guys say to that, huh? What do you guys say to that? Ah, uh, man, look, look, man. Everyone, if people are saying in chat, nice guys finish last. But mm. I don't know. It, 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 when a nice guy has 150 billion dollars in liquid cash, maybe, maybe, maybe things change a bit. I don't know. 
East Texas Alex says, Afternoon, Judge and Randall <laughs> Insider. I'm not an insider, but thank you. I have a question that I haven't heard anyone ask yet. With Microsoft owning Activision, will Microsoft lower the price of Call of Duty and all of the $70 games? That's an interesting question because I was also thinking mm. the same. You know what? Let's mm. hypothetically, let's let's imagine a scenario where Call of Duty remains on PlayStation, right? Say Jazz is right about this and he takes a victory lap in 18 months and everybody in, in chat ends up hating Jazz because he predicted this. We can call him <laughs> Jazz or something like that, right? Like Jazz would be like, I was right. Wow. What they should do is then, yeah, keep it 70 bucks on PlayStation and sixty dollars on Xbox, it, day one wow. in Game Pass. That's that's not very nice. It doesn't. Well, it, do that. It's, well, why not? It's not very nice. Who cares if it's nice? They're they're getting the Bill game. Needs, Bill is nice. He would not do that. That's mean. He wouldn't do that. That's mean. It feels nice. He wouldn't. Do I that. mean, you might as well at that point <laughs> squeeze as much <laughs> money as you can out of the PlayStation fans. Oh well, you think we're dropping that shit to sixty bucks? Uh uh-uh. us. You know what? We're raising it to eighty. <laughs> it's eighty dollars for your PlayStation guys to buy this game now. And you know what? Mm-mm. It's sixty dollars no. over on Xbox and it's free day one. So yeah, you can have Call of Duty, mm-hmm. but you know what? It's a hundred dollars now. Yeah. No. No, it feels too nice. That's just that's just mean, Rand. Why would you be so mean and say such mean, hurtful things? Microsoft will be nice, take the high road, Phil will be nice, make it sixty dollars. <laughs> I think like I think Xbox Game Pass is the value proposition. I think like it's it's funny, you know, because Hitman trilogy just hit Game Pass on PC. But Hitman Trilogy is getting dragged on Steam right now. It's getting dragged. And do you know why, Rand? Why? Seventy dollars on mm, Steam. That is or, true. No, sorry. Fifty dollars. I mean no, it's, it's full 60 price. Sixty dollars, isn't it? Or is it's it fifty? Well, I don't know. It's full it's full price, basically. And Steam fans think because it's a year old, it shouldn't be full price because they use the Steam sales. But they could get it in Game Pass. But they just don't want to. They don't want to use Game Pass. They want to own it. But they're mad because the game's a year old and it's being sold on Steam for full price. And people are like, well, you're double dipping, you're being greedy, blah, 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 and all this. And uh, I see the sentiment, but it's it's also like, you could get it on Game Pass for 15 bucks or 10 bucks even for PC Game Pass, rebranded to PC Game Pass for some reason. Shouldn't it be called Windows Game Pass, really? I don't know. But anyway, that's another discussion. But I uh, I think that's the value proposition. And I think like Microsoft will do things like exclusive DLC or exclusive battle pass tracks to Game Pass Ultimate and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think they'll take it off PlayStation because it's a ritual. It's a ritual, Rand. Mm. You don't mess with the rituals. You don't mess with rituals because that makes people sad. And Phil's a nice guy. He's not going to make anyone sad. Phil's a benevolent gaming dictator. Yeah. You know what, chat? You know what you need to do to <laughs> Jez right now? You know what you know what you have to do. Uh, we got uh, SMF saying, "I think Activision and Blizzard needs a rebranding from all this hate and toxic activity toward them. Let's call them Blizz Action." What do you guys think? Uh, I think the name Activision Blizzard has too much brand value to change it personally. Uh, so I don't think they'll they'll change it. Uh, King says, "Just have exclusive content or game mode where PlayStation gets the incomplete COD and Xbox gets the full package." That probably could happen. <laughs> Ghostface Killer says, "Leave Jez alone. He's just a boy." That's right. You're just a boy. B O I. Just a boy. I'm a little boy. Uh, Scott says, "Game Pass will be on PlayStation for Call of Duty." Hmm. I did see Jeff Grubb talk about that. Maybe we'll discuss that in a little bit. Sean T, thank you for the uh, five dollars super chat. Emmanuel says, "I hope Candy Crush stays multi-platform. Hopefully, well, I I doubt Candy Crush. I mean, Candy Crush will just be where Candy Crush is on mobile platforms." I wonder how Microsoft is going to get the Xbox ecosystem and inject that into into King's mobile platform, Jez, you know? Mm. Uh, I, uh, it, it's Some of that platform stuff is really interesting to think about. Like, what are they going to do with the Bethesda launcher and Battle.net and the Xbox app? And then you've got like like king has its own platform and then you've you've got like all these different platforms like are they all just going to go xbox achievements and like what how are they gonna i would not like to be the project manager who has to figure out the logistics of all this stuff because battle.net has a much better chat system than xbox i don't know if you know this ran i don't know if you know this but xbox's chat backend 
is Skype. Mm. Is that why it's bad? That's why it's bad, because it's Skype. Skype, Mm. okay for voice chat, terrible for messaging, which is why the messages on Xbox Live are really, really slow. Battle.net, on the other hand, has a different system. And not only is Battle.net, like, fully speedy and integrated, it's it's also integrated into games. So, like, I can if I'm playing World of Warcraft, I can whisper you if you're playing Hearthstone or Heroes of the Storm and stuff like that. Like, it's all this integrated system, and it's it's great. And it works across all their games. Like, I can see you online in all different games. It's It's great. So I think they should move to that system because Skype is trash. They should ditch Skype, go to Battle.net, make Battle.net their PC client. Because Battle.net has a legacy. Xbox app is terrible. So get rid of that. Put it all on Battle.net. Call it a day. Mm, interesting. I mean, I, you've been you've been saying the app on PC has been pretty crappy. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know. Yeah, Who terrible. knows what they do with all that stuff. They got the work cut out for them, though. Uh, yeah, do. Smoke says, people rather see Activision die than Microsoft own them. I, I think some people would, yeah, they, they definitely would like that. They don't want to see Microsoft get anybody. They'd rather see Activision and Blizzard just completely just go under and everybody lose their jobs. Um, Darge Knight, the man, the myth, the legend, goes, hey guys, so it started with Xbox having no games to now they're creating Monopoly. Man, life comes at you fast. It sure, certainly it does. Jacqueline says, uh, I did a few to write about Jez. Blizzard team should be able to have an identity with the Blizzard and should drop the team one through five labeling. What do you think? Hmm, can you repeat that last part? That uh, Blizzard team should ha- should be able to have an identity within Blizzard and they should just drop the team one through five labeling. Like ah. Blizzard one, Blizzard two, Blizzard three. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But it's it's kind of weird because the teams move through different games. Like the Hearthstone team, the Heroes of the Storm team kind of like sort of Im- div- dissolved into another team and, and they move around. It's a bit It's a bit weird how it works. So like it's a, it's not it's not the same as like some other studios out there where like they like have siloed teams that stick to one franchise kind of like how Microsoft's been doing it. I feel I think the Blizzard team sort of move around a little bit more. Like sometimes they'll some people pivot off one one game and then go and work on Heroes of the Storm and stuff like that. Like Heroes of the Storm is a weird case because I mean for those who don't know, Heroes of the Storm is like Blizzard's League of Legends clone and it has all it has it has characters from all the Blizzard's IP like Warcraft, Starcraft and whatever and Overwatch. And um that game like is kind of on hiatus. But every now and then it gets like a new hero or a new map because some of the Blizzard devs are sort of working on it in their own time as almost like a side project kind of thing. So um, I don't know. I don't know if that works for Blizzard, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. I I think they got, they'll just consult them and be like, well, how do you want to do it? Do you want to have separate teams? Do you want to you know give the team brands? Like, do you want to name a team like after Warcraft, one after Hearthstone, one after this, one after that? Or do you want to be more fluid with it? You know. Um, because you have to remember, like Rare, Rare has this, so this, this, Rare has this as well, where Rare has multiple teams within like the one building, and they've got like they've got like they call them barns, and there's like one team working on one game in one barn, and then another team working on another game in another barn. I think both barns are Sea of Thieves now, and then like that, that like another another part that was working on Ever Everworld, and they move around. So <laughs> I don't know if that works for Blizzard, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But Rand, will you try? World of Warcraft, if it comes to Xbox, no, <laughs> no, I'll never, I know, I'm never try World of Warcraft. I don't care that if it comes so, to Xbox. No, that was so blunt. You wouldn't no. even give it a go. No, no, don't care, don't care. don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. You play as a sexy elf. <laughs> you don't want to play as a sexy elf. I am not playing World of Warcraft. Not, not happening. You know, Man. so I'm sorry, Jez. I'm sorry, but hey, you we you know we basically you have cow we basically have two thousand people watching live right now, Jez. Oh wow! So two thousand um, cool peeps. Yeah, uh, if you guys are enjoying the show, make sure you hit that like button and uh, share this out so we can get more people to join us and dunk on Jez for his what the chat is saying is horrible take regarding Call of Duty, Phil Spencer, and PlayStation. You know, look, Phil's just a nice guy, man. He's just a nice guy. And while you're here, if you're thinking about maybe, you know, doing something downstairs, use code XB2 at manscaped.com. 20% off. 
Manscaped. So, boom. 20% off, baby. That's right. <laughs> um, Smoke says, didn't uh, Don almost kill Zigna after leaking Xbox? He sure did. He almost did. Uh, almost killed Xbox that- and then almost killed uh, the other company. So, yeah. <laughs> There's that Zigna again. Whatever. I can't say that word. I'm sorry. Zing- there's this Zinga. There's this some word. Dude, okay. I, we, I've told this story before, but when I was in grammar school or whatever, shut up. Um, I uh, I was in speech therapy for the first like four grades. There's this. Why oh, didn't that teacher had to say Zinga? There's this certain combination of words that I just when I when I speak and I'm not really thinking about the words I'm saying, I say them wrong. I don't know if anybody else has that problem. So like there's certain like shoulder like when I like when he, when there's like a, a soldier in the army and your shoulder, I literally have to think and parse the words because I'll just say it wrong, and huh. it's something that I had to work through when I was a kid in uh, uh, speech therapy and. I think Zigna is the same is the same yeah. is the same way, right? So, Zygna. yeah, I mean, drag me in chat all you want. Just remember, you're just <laughs> making fun of of somebody who was in speech therapy as a kid because um, yeah, guys, you guys, you guys are so mean. You know who wouldn't make fun of Rand? Phil. Phil's a nice. <laughs> Phil's guy. made fun of me though before. What are you talking about? Phil would never do that. He's a nice guy. Okay, he's a nice guy. I'm just looking at Zigna's uh, portfolio. <laughs> Um, they make a lot of crappy games, right? Yeah, of course they oh do. My God. It's mobile, of course they're crappy. I'm not surprised. Oh man, For, they, they've got a solitaire competitor. <laughs> that, that's, that's Microsoft's warehouse right there, and they've got a, <laughs> uh, they've the, got the... a lot of match three games. A, go- a golf mobile golf game, sick, sick mobile golf game, and a game called Product Incubator. What? What the hell does that mean? The Winter Shoulder that says, Ranch, say my username. I said it, and it's just like, I have to look at it and be like, Shoulder? Okay, I said it right. <laughs> you know, dealer used, dealer and Colt literally would make fun of me all the time when you leaked the code names for this gen, Scarlet, and it was Lockhart, and it was Anaconda. Apparently, I would say in my videos, Anaconda, Anaconda or Whatever I no, you used to say anaconda. I think. Anaconda, like, and anaconda. it just, I just, I just, I just say the word, and I'm not really thinking of the word, so I say it wrong, and it's just like <laughs> whatever. And people make fun of me for it. Fine, I, you know, if you you can't laugh oh. at yourself, who can you laugh at, really, right? So yeah, I say words yes. wrong. Sajid so Caesar says, "Is that why you kept on calling Kenna Kenya Bridge of Spirits? Probably, <laughs> probably, yeah." Oh my god um let's see what else we got here michael says zombies should be xbox exclusive uh maka maka zilla says rand even after the bethesda acquisition you said you still wanted more with activision blizzard being acquired are you still hungry for more hell yeah i want more i'm never well i want more mainly because rand what about market consolidation i don't give a shit about market consolidation (laughs) Rand. I don't care. Don't there's plenty you of can't. there's still plenty of developers and publishers out there. This idea that like, oh my god, like <laughs> two companies are going to literally own everything in the near future, I think is, you know, uh, chicken little the sky the sky is falling kind of talk. Um, chicken little, yeah. What the hell's that? Chicken little. I what own. Look, I own all. The, I own all the systems. I, so if they are eventually all controlled by three companies, then whatever. I play whatever I want wherever I want, right? Um, and the fuck we, is Chicken Little. Chicken Little, man. You don't know what Chicken Little is? I don't fucking know. What chicken, chicken, chicken Little, little was the little chicken that was like the sky's falling, and okay. he would he would go right. he would go to other chickens and be like the sky's falling, but the sky wasn't falling, so nobody believed him. It's kind of like the boy who cried wolf. And then the, the one time, what are you talking about? <laughs> you don't know who Chicken Little is. What is going on? Is that oh, it's some TV show? Oh, it's a movie. It's a movie, it's a movie. but it's also you know, two thousand five. You were like forty years old when that came out. Two thousand five. Yeah. Yeah. That's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Phil. Yeah, no. But the, even the thing <laughs> is, like, Activision only right now makes Call of Duty. And while, sure, I play Call of Duty mostly every year because I like to play the campaign, they don't really have a lot of stuff, everything else. And Blizzard's only like, we got World of Warcraft, which I'll never play, right? 
And then they got Diablo 4, which I'm interested in, and Overwatch 2, which is kind of, eh. So it's like, Bethesda, to me, the skate, like, this is the biggest video game news ever. This is, the, this is, this acquisition can't be understated. But to me, Bethesda is bigger than Activision because Bethesda has all the developers and the franchises that I actually want to play. Where Activision Blizzard is kind of not, and I understand, and I understand why Microsoft bought them because it checks all the box marks. PC developer with the huge history, a great legacy that they can build back up, the biggest video game out there, check mark that could grow Game Pass to unbelievable heights, right? And then the mobile platform that they need. But me, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I wanted WB Games, I wanted, and you wanted Capcom, so. Yeah, I mean, sure. I don't th- get more. I we we had that discussion before where you were like, "Well, when's too much is enough?" or whatever it was, and I'm like, "You still need more because you still need a whole bunch of games coming out because you know games yeah, take I, forever I, I to come out." And I don't know. Capcom anymore, man. It's all about From Software now, baby. It's all about From Software. Yeah, you don't but, care. <clears throat> I I I don't think they need more now anymore. I think I think that's enough. That's enough. No. It's never they enough. Can IO, they can buy IO and, t- and Crystal. Yes. But that, that's enough. IO, Crist- I, IO Interactive, Crystal, Avalanche. That's, prob- that's probably mm-hmm. enough at that point. I'd, ho- I'd hold off on Avalanche to see, till we see how Sure, okay, sure. IO Interactive and Crystal Dynamics, Idols Montreal. That's that's good enough. You, you could probably stop at that point. You know? So. Do they need a Japanese presence? That... The well, Japanese I mean, presence feels like the missing link in all this. I mean, Phil's talked about that repeatedly. And uh, the, they have Tango Gameworks through Bethesda. And not enough. Do they get, a, enough. Do they get a Japanese presence, a, a, a bigger foothold in Japan in the future? It, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I mean, dude, nothing is off the table. They literally bought Activision Blizzard for $70 billion, Jez. Nothing is... Anything can happen at this point. $70 billion. I mean, you know what could even happen? Like, anything can happen. You could put out a good take on Twitter one of these days. Wow. (laughs) All my takes are amazing. What are you talking about? Yeah. I should just stick to bad food takes. People don't like some of the mayo tweets that I make. You know what's the funny? Good, I've had some people message me saying that they don't like the fact that I'm mean to Nintendo. <laughs> and that like I'm such a fanboy and I just shit on Nintendo. And I'm like, you do realize that like I play up that Nintendo hate for the show to try to be more entertaining. Like mm. I don't care about Nintendo. Like, I don't care about Nintendo, so they don't enter into my mind to the point to either like them or dislike them, let alone hate them, right? Like, they just kind of really don't exist to me. So, I it's kind of like a, a TV show they don't... It's like, you know, like some of those TV shows on Netflix that are that exist that, that are there and they're popular, like, like, like uh, I think, Bridgerton or Virgin River or something. Like, those are extremely popular TV shows, but... I'm never going to watch them. I don't hate them because they're popular, right? It's just like, oh man, you're such, you're such a disgusting fanboy. How could you hate on Nintendo? And it's just like, bro, I play that up for the show. Like, cause normally it's just like, it's PlayStation hate or Xbox hate on a lot of these things. Nobody ever really talks about a Nintendo in a bad way. I seem like I'm the only one who does. Nintendo fans hate Nintendo. Sure. (laughs) Nintendo fans hate Nintendo. That's I'm just amb- I'm just ambivalent towards Nintendo, but I just played up into some way where it's like Nintendo sucks. I don't I don't care about Nintendo. That's just basically the answer. It's fine. It's whatever. I, anybody that yeah. likes Nintendo, I'm happy for you. I hope you get all the enjoyment out of it. I uh, hope you enjoy Pokemon and Super Metroid or you know, Mario and Zelda and stuff. I'm happy for you. It's just it's it's weird when you ha- when you're on when you put your takes out there that people who disagree with you will just go to these lengths to like <laughs> send you a met. Like I've never, I don't know about you guys, but I've never messaged somebody because of something they said before. I don't think I've ever left a comment in someone's YouTube uh, comment section. Like, sure. I've been in <clears throat> YouTube chats while I say something in the chat, but I've never left somebody a YouTube comment 
uh, at all. I just, I don't know. I couldn't imagine the idea of listening to somebody and, and then sending them a message being like, how could you hate this thing that I like? It's just, this is weird. But yeah, I do get messages about Nintendo Jazz. It's your fault. Oh, man. <laughs> Freaky Deaky Rip. says, if it wasn't for Nintendo, you probably wouldn't even have a podcast, homie. Wow. Nintendo invented podcasts. News to me. Well, I mean, I, Nintendo did get me into gaming. So, I mean, like, there is that. Sega got me into gaming. Man, Alex Kidd in Miracle World built into the Master System. And, um,. It's uh, swings and roundabouts, really. What's the next topic, Brand? I mean, you still got we still got more super chats from people dissing on you, Jazz. Okay, let's hear them. Let's hear some um, more super chats. Let's see. Uh, uh, Spartan says dollar store lawyers are out on Twitter. Run. That's true. Spider Man says Activision has Activision have released a game at seventy dollars for the Series X and PS Five. Now that Microsoft won Activision Blizzard, will the games be released at sixty now? Only time will tell. And I, I, I did say before there's. I thought there was a chance that Starfield could release at seventy Jez, uh this year. Uh, and you've always said that if they do raise the prices to seventy, it just makes Game Pass look better. So yeah, I think like um, yeah, I. It's it's weird though now because now they've got Call of Duty, they can almost dictate some of this stuff. It's like um, they can uh, they can be like yeah we'll keep Call of Duty sixty dollars and then we'll we'll add it to Xbox Smart Delivery which by the way Dying Light Two a Smart Delivery much to my surprise and I was pretty cool pretty cool about that Activision is one of the companies that charges for an upgrade and they don't use Smart Delivery so Microsoft with with the clouds of Call of Duty Microsoft does get to sort of have an impact on you know what prices are end up being. But um, I don't know. I still think that could go seventy dollars. But it's like you say, they'll be in Game Pass anyway. So yeah, you're a malice says. So you're saying don't subscribe, engage to this channel. Ha <laughs> ha. I didn't say that. I subscribe to plenty of channels on YouTube, and I watch their videos, and I engage by hitting the like button. I just don't engage in the comments section. It's kind of like if you follow me on Twitter, you know I don't tweet, and. It's probably the reason why I also don't leave comments on YouTube channels because I just don't, it's, I don't know. I, I just not, I guess I'm not built that way, but no, I am subscribed to a lot of YouTube channels. I have YouTube premium, so I don't have to watch ads. So the people I, I don't use an ad blocker on YouTube because I want the people who I support when I watch their videos to at least get some money from me. Uh, and if I like the video, I'll hit the like button. I just don't comment. So... Please, if you're watching this, uh, you don't have to comment in my videos, but I would greatly like it if you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button from time to time. <laughs> and also, check out Manscaped.com. Yes, and check out Manscaped. <laughs> XP2 at the checkout. Uh, uh, see what else? Uh, Spartan Ghost says, does Sony, need to get per does Sony need to get purchased to compete with Microsoft? That's interesting, and that's kind of what Jez was talking about before. I mean, as of right now, today, no. 20 years from now, if streaming takes off, I mean, who knows? Maybe Apple does buy PlayStation. Maybe Tencent buys PlayStation. Who, who knows what the future holds at, at, at any of this you know, point in time? Um, Chinook Guy says, what do you think, who do you think will be on the Xbox Activision Blizzard roundtable when that happens? Well, not Bobby Kotick, that's for sure. <laughs> Because he's gone. He's gone after this deal goes through. I could see Mikey Barra being on the Blizzard stage uh, since he's the head. I could see Todd Howard and, and Pete Hines with the, the Bethesda since they, we already kind of seen that. Phil and Sarah Bond on the Xbox side, essentially. Um, LA Chargers fan says, F the higher road. I bought a PS5 to play Spider-Man. Make it exclusive. All the casuals will flock to Xbox, push Game Pass, or get something in return. Yeah, Jez. LA Chargers fan. He says... What, what is it, LA Chargers? Make it exclusive. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Mm -hmm. And I think it would make some business sense for Microsoft to make it exclusive. But Rand, Phil's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Yeah, I know. You, nice keep, you keep on saying that. Phil's a nice guy. 
Uh, let's see what else we got here. Joe says, it'll be nice to see all the ponies squirm for the next 18 months. It's about time Xbox takes a W after all the L's we took last gen. Uh, J- JK No says, if Game Pass is on PS5, Xbox console is irrelevant. Well, I mean, uh, Xbox console, I mean, they've talked about that. It's not about necessarily console. It's it's about subscriptions and monthly active users and all that stuff. So, uh, Zero Miss says, Jez and Rand, what would it take for Xbox to get Final Fantasy VII Remake onto the Xbox Store or even Game Pass? Uh, at this point in time, a miracle? <laughs> right? It what seems was the like. Question again? Sorry. What would it take to get uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake on the Xbox Store or in Game Pass? I said a miracle. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think they've, it's clear they've got some kind of deal with Sony. But, you know, that's it. It's capitalism, baby. Oh, it's, so it's baby. capitalism for Sony, and Xbox can't <laughs> do it because Phil's just a good mm. guy, huh? Feels nice. Feels nice. Mm-mm. Jesus. No capitalism for Phil. Um, Just nice. Installation 7 says, does Xbox make campaign and zombies exclusive to Xbox and Game Pass, then fully transitions COD multiplayer Warzone to free-to-play? I mean, I'll give my thoughts here in just a minute. Uh, JD Gamer says, Jez, how much cash do you think Microsoft will have on hand when this deal be- when this deal closes? Because I don't expect them to make any more major acquisitions until this closes, but who's next and why? Personal thoughts. Sir, Jez. Can you repeat that? Jeez, are you not paying attention to anything? What are you doing? Are you playing yeah, Dark Souls? Yeah, sorry. I, I, was so, I was sorting out some work stuff. Oh, okay. Um, uh, basically, he says he wants to know how much money Microsoft will have on hand after the deal closes. And uh, ah, right. I do who's know next and why after who they should acquire after this? Uh, well, Microsoft had about $150 billion, between $150 and $180 billion in cash before this acquisition. So, I believe... Um, it wasn't quite as much as Apple, um, but it was a significant amount running around $150 billion ish That's a conservative estimate. So you can assume after this, they've got $75 billion left. They could buy another Activision, basically, if they wanted. Um, but you have to remember, there are other parts of Microsoft's business that want to make acquisitions. They bought Nuance for $10 billion ish wasn't it 10 billion um so okay anthony kawana in chat says 137 billion um if that's a matter of public record fair enough but um i don't know but still they've got they've got tens of billions left so they could buy something else they could buy ea probably uh, you, like I saw a tweet where someone put out like all the, the the market caps of all the different companies. You have to assume that they probably pay have to pay double of what the market cap is, right? So, um, oh yeah, twenty billion they paid for new ones. That's crazy. Twenty billion mm. for an, a voice AI company. I know it's kind of crazy, right? What the hell are they gonna do with that? Cortana's dead, isn't it? I don't bloody know, but. <clears throat> It's kind of like, will they make another acquisition on this kind of level? I don't think so. I don't think so. But who knows? Who knows these days, right? It's crazy. Nobody saw Activision Blizzard coming. Yeah, I I just like, it's just wild. Man. Although there's kind of like extraneous circumstances with this one, though. Like, I feel like if Bobby Kotick ran a, an actual good ship over there and there were no problems, yeah, this wouldn't have happened. No. It's because the stock price tanked to the point where it was like, well, wait a minute, we can get Activision Blizzard for this amount, and that it's basically everything we wanted, a mobile platform, a PC developer, and the biggest franchise in gaming? Like, hello. <laughs> so, um, yep. the thing is, is like this isn't going to close for 18 months, and Microsoft makes, what, $15 billion in profit like every quarter, or every three months? So... I mean, it won't be long before they're back up to, you know, so you figure they have like $120 billion in cash or something, right? Yeah, something like Minus that. 60, so you're down to 50, or maybe down to 60, and then by the time the deal goes through, they're probably already have replenished, like what? Uh, think about it. If they if they make $15 billion in profit for the next year, that's that's the whole acquisition. They still would be at $100 million in, in uh, liquid cash, right? Yeah, um, 
and they're just they're just going to make more money because even as the pandemic starts wrapping up more and more people are going to be working from home like all lots of companies are offering flexible work from home blah 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 we've seen pc shipments explode this year and not only pc shipments we're talking about the demand for cloud services servers and office 365 and azure apps and all that kind of stuff microsoft's going to be swimming in cash the next few quarters if you're if you're into shares and stuff microsoft's probably a buy right now i would say so um i don't know i think uh they've just basically shown they're serious about this and they've like i said earlier they've said to apple and amazon and google if you were serious about this core gaming thing this is the kind of money we play with around here you know because i think a lot apple and google probably have this mentality like we need to we need to have like these like tiny mobile games that are like really great margins that don't cost very much to make and they're made by like teams of 20 people or whatever and phil was just coming in like this is this is how the big boys play <laughs> this is how we this is how we play in the core gaming arena we don't have teams of 20 people making 2d match 3 games that have a microtransaction to in order to play it we don't target our games to like normies and boomers we make art we are basically the intersection of hollywood and technology we spend a lot of money in this arena amazon google and apple yeah amazon Do and google have haven't spent all? much in the gaming arena like Go no, stadia just no. kind of like they they just shut down their whole first party studio system like they saw microsoft by bethesda and they're like all right we're done. We're out of here. See you later. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah oh, exactly. wait, we we have to spend that much money to be competitive. Oh no, we're done. We're, we're th this this yeah. video game thing ain't, ain't for us. And, even uh, even Google even Google was just even at the Bethesda purchase, Google was like, no, we can't we can't do this. This is too much. And I think Amazon's learning a very hard lesson right now, seeing how much they spend on the new world, which is already basically dead. You know. They spent like I think it was reported they spent something like three hundred and fifty million dollars trying to build the New World MMO. When's the last time you heard anyone talk about New World? It like it, it's been it a while. died. It, it died faster than than a, a mosquito. You know, I, it's funny. I, I said in October when it, wherever it was, I was like, New World will be dead by December, and I was pretty much right. I could tell it would be dead from the first five minutes of playing it, and the numbers were inflated by Amazon pushing the game through its partners on Twitch and not the fact that it was actually a good game. I think Amazon thinks they can market their way into, into dominance by using Twitch, but you still have to make a good game. You still have to make a good game. And I think Amazon didn't realize that. I think Amazon thought gamers were stupid and they would just play anything that Twitch streamers told them to play. You know? It could have been. But it don't work like that. You know, it don't work like that. If... If uh, Phil had the backing of Satya back when Twitch was for sale, I bet you any money Microsoft and Xbox would own Twitch at this point. Yeah, probably. Probably. But I, I also don't know because Microsoft's really nervous about social media. Yeah, that is true. They, they are. are. They yeah. are so nervous. Do you think Microsoft... Can you see Microsoft having to deal with a controversy of like hot tub streams mm. and like some of its like uncontrollable influences on Twitch. Like they call them like brand unsafe, you know, influencers. Microsoft hates that shit. They want everything safe and sanitized and, you know, apolitical and just just we're not here are, are we're you, not here to be controversial. Are you brand unsafe, Jez? Are you sanitized? I'm, pro I'm pretty brand unsafe. Are you? Say. Am I am yeah. I brand safe or am I brand unsafe? You're probably you're probably more brand safe than me. Like you know, I I spam Twitter drunk, <laughs> and um, I've gotten in trouble with that in my own company a few times. But you know, that's the thing. It's <clears throat> Microsoft doesn't like that shit. They want every they want they want everything to be nice and soft and safe. You know, at least with games they can say, oh well, this is art. It's different. But when you've got like a Twitch streamer, you know going into a bathroom with a camera like dr disrespect did microsoft would be like My <clears throat> microsoft would have banned him straight away i know like dr disrespect got banned a little bit after and he like had a few days ban after that incident but he would have been he would have been gone ages ago if microsoft owned twitch 
I don't think you want Microsoft in social media. No, frankly, the one they were going to buy TikTok, <laughs> absolutely not. I don't think you know Microsoft. No, that you don't. You don't like Stein does a good job with the marketing on the the accounts or whatever. But yeah, I don't think you want Microsoft in charge of like Twitch and Pokemon and Ninja and that whole thing that went on this past like week or whatever. Yeah. Like I don't think they want any any anything to do with that. Um, I don't want anything to do with that. No. See. Uh, Smurf says, I think if the goal is to get Game Pass on PlayStation, you give a partial Game Pass, meaning everything except Xbox Game Studios, so people still have an incentive to get Xbox. That's an interesting take. Uh, Matthew says, how do you integrate Blizzard games into Game Pass PC without tying them into Battle.net client? Battle.net on PC will have to be overhauled. I mean, that's a problem someone's going to have to figure out when this all goes down. Who knows? Um, Dave Lopez says, could a new World of Warcraft come to Xbox maybe someday? Uh, Jez, I think we, we've said about that's probably likely, right? That World yeah, of Warcraft like, will come. <clears throat> in the last expansion, they included the Xbox controller APIs, not just for the Xbox, you know, Series X and S controller, but also for the Xbox adaptive controller. So you can play World of Warcraft with a controller now. I haven't tried it myself. Before, you had to use mods and a, and a hack to get it to work with a controller but now it's just built in i haven't tried it i don't know how well it plays some classes probably play all right with it like a retribution paladin you only have to press two buttons to play that play that class <laughs> so that that probably you know it's all right for that class but you know a uh, hardcore pro gamer class like a demonology warlock i can't imagine that would be fun with a controller you're just but like I speaking digress. gibberish to me right now i don't know what you're talking about yeah, I'm I'm trolling I'm trolling paladins. Okay, like, what what what's a, like, what's a paladin? Paladin is a noob class oh. in World of Warcraft. Okay, okay. Basically. All right. Um, can we can so, we move uh, on? Can I, I don't care about World of Warcraft. <laughs> but man, I remember when you what were are you talking about. It's an Xbox IP now. I know it is, I, and guess what? Who cares? Flush yeah. it down the toilet. What? What? World of Warcraft. I think isn't World of Warcraft the most profitable game of all time? Maybe, but guess what? Rand doesn't care. Well, Rand. That's mean. I, I know. You can be an elf. Like, Do you look, not want to be an elf? Gears is way, way better than World of Warcraft. Wow. That's mean, man. That is mean. And just for the record, I'm joking. Hopefully, he takes all this stuff seriously about me saying flush World of Warcraft <laughs> down the toilet. Uh, uh, um, yep. I can see the headlines right now. <laughs> I know, right? gonna be, you're going to join me I'm, in Destiny. I'm brand unsafe Alpha. now. Yep. Brand, uh, brand unsafe Alpha. Yes. Um, <laughs> Mika says, uh, should Xbox revive Vicarious Visions? I mean, they should. They should never have gotten rid of them. Um, I think they, I doubt they will. I think they've been integrated into Bethesda, so I doubt the company gets revived, but I would like it. Um, Doovie says, Phil just doing what he needs to do for the merger to go through when 2024 hits. New COD titles will be exclusive. I can't wait until they skip a year. Uh, Black Ronin says, what are your thoughts on emerging games market like Africa? Google and hip-hop legend Nas just invested $20 million in publisher Carry First. I mean, the emerging mar- emerging games market stuff, uh, that's where cloud comes in, right, Jez? Where... Yeah, I mean, Phil, I'm pretty sure Phil or one of the execs talked on talked on some interviews about how like they're looking at they're looking at places like africa and india and also brazil and um, south america as like growth areas for um the cloud because there are there are taxes on electronic goods there that make consoles really expensive and cloud and subscriptions is a way that these sort of core games can be experienced in places where traditionally tvs and consoles are actually really really expensive so India as well, India especially is like going to be a huge growth opportunity for Microsoft once they get their infrastructure in place. But much like everything, Rand, the cloud is bottlenecked by the chip shortage. Mm. So um, we're going we're gonna to see all of this slow down. This is going to be a long gen because of the chip shortage, I think. We're going to see like we're going to see PS4 and Xbox One probably have a longer tail than expected. Sony announced they're going to start manufacturing more PS4s even though like Microsoft stopped the manufacturing Xbox One consoles. They do have the Xbox Series S which is easy to get silicon for. But um I think it's going to be a long tail because the cloud's been slowed down, graphics processors have been slowed down. 
Xbox and PlayStation consoles have been slowed down. I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo Switch Pro, if they're making one, that's been slowed down too. So, um, yeah, it's all going to be slowed down. But I do see like India and South Africa and Africa in general and South America being growth areas and opportunity. Microsoft needs to solve its localization issues if it they wants do. to do that. They do. Uh, Dead, <clears throat> Dead Planet says Xbox has so many devs now. Could they ever add teams to supercharge a game already in development that they want to help get out the door faster? They sort of did that with Halo Infinite when it was falling behind. They were just like, throw everybody at it. Throw everybody at it. Um, but yeah, I don't necessarily think... Th- like, they did it because they needed that game out, right? And and sometimes when, when games get close to the finish, other, other devs from other teams might help out a bit. But I doubt you'll see like a full team on like somebody else's game. But I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know much about game development. You're asking the wrong person, really. I really do think we could see a coalition do StarCraft Ghost. StarCraft, Ooh. perfect for a third-person shooter. StarCraft as a third-person shooter just makes total yeah. sense to me. Yeah, I that's think, that's like, where a lot of the stuff is cool because like you have a lot of these like your Spyros and your um, you know uh, what Crash and these older Activision IPs. You don't necessarily have to have an Xbox Studio or any of the Xbox Studios that you have making one, unless they really want to. Unless like somebody at Bethesda is like, Arcane's like, you know what, really would want? Let's make a StarCraft like, uh, you know, type of game that they would make. You could go to like a third party, like they are with Io Interactive, and have them make stuff. You know what they need to do? I was listening to the one and only Grub Grub, Jeffy Grub Grub, on uh, yep, he, he he talked about the acquisition on, on his podcast, uh, Giant Bomb. And it was really, really in- informative. And he, somebody asked, like, should Xbox make a, like a Smash Brothers clone with all their IPs they own now or, and, or like a kart racer? And he was like, maybe not necessarily a Smash Brothers clone, but how about they bring back Fusion Frenzy and put all these characters in there? And, and just, you know, there's your party game. You got to uh, bring back Fusion Frenzy and have, like, all these characters from all different walks of the franchises in the game. A lot of people are saying uh, in chat, Crash Team Racing. Yeah, Crash Team Racing. I mean, you could make, a, you, could make you know. How about, uh, how about this? How about this? Guitar Hero with the Doom soundtrack. Ooh, well, you know, Phil talked about Guitar Hero, right? Even Bobby Kotick talked about Guitar Hero yeah. and Skylanders. Do you think we see? And I, 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 do we have a super chat in here about Guitar Hero? Do you think we it, it, could the market once again support plastic instruments? Could Guitar Hero Hell be yeah. a franchise that Xbox brings back? Well, I think I think it's likely, man. I think like we've seen games like Beat Saber blow up in VR. I think there's like there's a there's a there's something to be said about what they could do with today's tech with guitars and stuff like that. I think they, they still need to make them affordable and stuff, but like with today's tech, they could stick all kinds of stuff in them, like for augmented reality, you know, like you could, it could track your movements on screen. You wouldn't need a camera. And then maybe it's your avatar playing it instead, your Xbox avatar. And you it like sort of detects where you're moving with the gyroscope or something. I don't know. There's some, there's some cool shit they could do there. Um, and also, one of the issues with Guitar Hero was the licensing on music, right? But like Microsoft has owns the rights to a lot of music now with Doom, Wolfenstein, and mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I mean, obviously, you're gonna want your Dragon Force in there, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, and your Muse, I, I just, yeah, yeah. I discovered Floyd, Dragon Force yeah, through Guitar Hero. You know, <laughs> so I think most people I didn't did. know Dragon Force when you beat like yeah. Guitar Hero three and you're trying to play through uh, through the Flyer and Flames. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Man. epic. That was that's such an because I, I never heard that song before, and I'm playing. I'm like, this song is amazing. Slaps. This slaps. Love that song. Um, what else we got here? Uh, RDX Son of Fett says people cheer when Sony makes something exclusive, but like Tomb Raider deal, people lose it when Xbox does the same. Achievement says, Jazz, what's with that uh, Ben Jones tweet you just retweeted? Zenimax oh, yeah. Online pouring heart and souls into an Xbox IP? Is it an existing IP? What's going on here? Explain, Jazz. What's going on? Yeah, during during the show, I was just uh, tweeting out that LinkedIn premium thing, and I noticed that Ben Jones, who leads, um, is a creative director for Zenimax Online, who make the old scrolls online, he put out a tweet saying, I know I say it a lot, but our team, Zenimax Online, is bringing the fire 
It's so exciting seeing the love that each of them have for this new Xbox IP pour out with every project update. Honored to be part of this amazing group. So I don't think he's talking about an existing IP. He specifically said new Xbox IP. So I basically, that's him saying we are building an Xbox exclusive, probably an MMO of some kind. And in, so? in a new IP. You think it's going to be an yeah. MMO of some kind? We know that they are well, making they are a big new AAA games, game. Right? They are, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's going to be an, an MMO. But, I mean, it, it most likely probably is. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Mm, a lot but of games I, being made, Jazz. A lot of games. A lot of games. I'm not a big fan of Elder Scrolls Online. I think it's like the combat is really wishy-washy. And the com- it's, it's so easy that it's boring. I know MMOs have to be like a little bit easy to make them accessible to people, but it's it sort of goes so far into easy that it's boring for me. So I hope I hope it's an actually a good game, but I'll have to wait and see. Yeah, uh, Chance Wolf says two <coughs> questions: Is Guitar Hero dead because of licensing? Uh, it doesn't seem like it. I mean, it was mentioned in the the press release, and Phil talked about it, and sounds like it might come back. And who could Daddy Phil Warbucks buy next? Anybody who. Whatever, uh, it doesn't. Anybody's on the table at this point. Anybody? Well, maybe except for Nintendo or, or PlayStation. But at this point, you you buy Bethesda and you buy Activision Blizzard. Pff, no, nobody's nobody's off limits. Uh, Mallorac says we all desire things that we rarely get. Phil's PS5 COD desire sounds like it comes with unknown caveats, like play, platforms that support Game Pass. Um, uh, what else we got here? Loving Life says, how do you guys feel about StarCraft Ghost being resurrected? Let's bring Blizzard back to the forefront. I'm sure you would love that. Right, Jez? StarCraft yeah, coming back. StarCraft Ghost. So many I things they could do. Um, JD Gamer says, where do you see Sarah Bond after Activision Blizzard merger closes next year? And what about Mike Ybarra or Rod Ferguson? I would imagine Rod f- stays at uh, uh, running Diablo, right? Yeah. And Mike, I guess it depends on what his position is going to be there. I could easily see Mike staying for like three years as a typical like executive staying at a company that was bought out and then heading over to Nintendo. Um, but maybe, you know, the promotion of running Blizzard is enough for him. I don't know. Uh, and Sarah Bond, like the way she's out there in social media and the way Xbox is kind of presenting her i get the sense that she's gonna follow phil and she'll be ceo yeah uh microsoft gaming eventually but i would drop i would drop money on that prediction that sarah bond leads xbox or well microsoft gaming someday i would drop money on that it's definitely possible oh, wow shock cop just shock cop just like piqued my interest with a gears mmo message a what gears mmo That'd be sick. No? I know you love Gears and you love MMOs, so combine them together. I mean, if you wanted the MMO to be dead before (laughs) it even comes out, then I guess, sure. (laughs) I want a Gears MMO now. Gears MMO would be sick. I can Mm. play like a random cog dude and just sort of run around killing dudes all day. I do think Gears would work as a service game. Like, after playing... What was that game called now? Oh, you know what you know what I'm talking about because I've said this before. That sort of it was like a Souls like ish third person shooter. Oh, um, Remnant from the Ashes. Yeah, Remnant from the Ashes. Yeah, I think Gears would work as a Remnant from the Ashes clone, like a sort of third person online service type kind of game with loot, because Gears Tactics proved that loot works in Gears of War. I don't know. I don't know. I like Gears of War, man. You do. Let me be. You do. Let me be. Uh, let's see. Doovie says they got Activision for the price. It was before the scandal. That's true. Actually, less because it was over $100 before the scandal. So I actually got it cheaper. RRD says exclusive Sergeant Johnson skin in Xbox Call of Duty. They should totally do that. Untitled says the amount of people that lost their marbles over Jez's tweet proves to me that Twitter has too much influence in people's lives. They should go outside. Yeah, they should touch grass, huh? I mean, I thought it was pretty plainly obvious that Jez's tweet was like, hey, if you're not somebody that is like super wealthy, then this tweet doesn't apply to you. But it was like literally, I'm a gaming journalist and I'm not rich. Why are you talking shit about me, Jez? It's like, man, I, I, I worded it badly. I admit that. I hold hands, hands up. I admit that. But like, 
the amount of people who are taking it out of context and sort of like looking for a reason to be mad and just wanting to like score points and whatever that was just exhausting you know a lot of people dm me and they were like yeah your tweet was bad but i understood where you're coming from i'm a poor kid i was i'm a, i was a poor kid man i shared my bedroom with mice you know as a kid and um when i see people out here sort of ignoring the benefits that game pass brings like forcefully so while also working at mainstream outlets like the bbc or the bloomberg's or the you know washington post and and a lot of these companies are also owned by mega corporations too and when they when they when they're in a position to moralize moralize consolidation i kind of feel like it comes from a position of privilege i don't know it triggered me rand i was triggered yeah emotionally from my inner inner child poor kid who would have loved game pass all the games i had as a kid were secondhand or stolen sorry blockbuster video but i probably put you out of business <laughs> <laughs> you're just admitting to crimes now is that what we're doing well i've still i've still got my copy of clay fighter with the blockbuster logo on the back of it you're you're just a <laughs> you're a criminal just jazz you're a criminal i'm a criminal criminal um, do you ever play clay fighter yes i play clay fighter i i, I 100% played Clay Fighter and uh, what was the other one? It was like uh, Beast War? No. Uh, where you were like dinosaurs fighting? What was the name of that? Um, oh, oh, oh man. Primal Rage? Primal Rage, yeah. yeah. Primal Rage, man. Beast War. Why the hell are they called Beast War? Like, what Beast is wrong Wars. with me? Beast Wars is a TV show. Yeah, I guess, Beast- yeah. That's Transformers, Beast right? Beast Wars is awesome. But did you ever watch Beast Wars? Mm, I oh think it was a little God. bit past my time. Dude, Beast Wars was sick. It was, was like it? a sequel. It was like a sequel to the 80s Transformers. But like, it sort of unraveled that it was a sequel as the show progressed. And it was like, oh my god, there's like references to like the, the classic Transformers here. And the way they weaved it into the classic Transformers, it was amazing. It's like the best kids TV show I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Beast Wars. I didn't know that. And I did watch the 80s Transformers show because that's when I was a kid. So I love me some Transformers. Dude, go go on YouTube and look up like look up like Beast Wars death. And some of the death scenes in that show was so so devastating. It was like, man, this is a kid's show? This is a kid's show? I don't know. Beast Wars is sick, man. But uh yeah, we're a Beast Wars podcast now. And some people in chat are saying Bloody Roar. Did you ever play Bloody, Bloody Roar? Bloody Roar? That might be the one, yeah. I think yeah, I played Bloody that. Roar, yeah. Where you turn into Dino animals. Riders, Beast Wars. Someone says, Two-rock. HE Gaming says, The Piss Fatality. I actually remember that, yeah. You got everybody everybody looking back on nostalgia, Jazz. Did you ever watch Reboot? Uh, I know Reboot, I never watched it. I know what it is, though. Reboot was made by the same company that made Beast Wars. And Reboot ah, was okay. sick as well. <laughs> Amazing show. Hexadecimal, sick villain. Absolutely sick. And Megabyte, Megabyte was sick, man. Man, uh, there were some great shows when I was a kid. JD Gamer says, name three dormant IPs that you would love to see brought back with full backing of Microsoft and what studio to do it. And would it be a sequel or a remake? Um, I'll go. Uh, let's see. I would like Microsoft to... Well, we don't know. It's ha- we we kind of know what's happening, but Killer Instinct 2. I'd like, um, mm-hmm. I'd like Microsoft to fund a Quantum Break two, which will never happen. But hey, that's I, I want a Quantum Break two. Um, but realistically, I want a Rise two. I think that would qualify for a dormant IP, right? What if? Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Crytek owned Rise, right? Yes. I think that it's a shame because I think the Coalition could make a good Rise game. They probably could. They probably yeah. they probably could. And what would be another one? Um You know, just I, I'm feeling really generous today. So Banjo kazooie. I want my peeps in chat who love Banjo and want to come back. I want Banjo to come back for you. So I'm gonna use <laughs> one of my wishes, not for myself, but for all my friends watching the show who desperately want Banjo-Kazooie to come back at some point. Wow, you're as nice as Phil Spencer. I am. I am. I'm, I'm a very yeah, nice guy. Nice. What, do you, what do you think? Random what do you want to come back? Hexen? Stuff like that? Yes. 
Hexen, I'd love to see Hexen come back. I'd love to see like id software bounce between bounce between Hexen and Doom. I think Hexen and Doom and Quake like is a good sort of yeah, you know, I don't know, a good triptych for uh for id software. Cool word for you there, which I learned from uh, BioShock, I think. Um <laughs> see, who says games aren't educational? Um but uh, Hexen would be class. I also I also want Killer Instinct to come back as well. Rand, I want to play you at Killer Instinct sometime. Okay, I'd have to we re-download should, we should... the game. We should we we'll, we'll play when Killer Instinct Two comes out, made by Bandai Namco. We should make we should make a lobby with the peeps from Xbox Two Discord. Ooh, and then and then uh, you know rock rock out some uh, see who's the best at Killer Instinct. You know, because Killer Instinct has a really good uh, party system if when it works at least. <laughs> I also I also want to see um I want to see a sequel to Giz Tactics. Yeah, I know you do. Some people uh, are Giz saying Tactics Conquer, is... Prototype, Lost Odyssey, Blue Dragon, Prototype, Recore, yeah. Recore, a lot of Recore. Remember when they did Recore? Then they did a definitive edition of Recore, and then we never heard from Recore again. Yeah, yeah. Recore was had potential as an IP, I think, but. A little half baked. A very small team worked on that, and I think it was reflected in its launch price. Thirty dollars, right? It launched thirty dollars. I forget what it launched at, but it, yeah, that might be mm. right. Yeah. Who owns Bloody Raw? Is it Konami? Uh, they might actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, Jacques Jacques says, "Here's something funny. Xbox now owns their own GTA and Red Dead with True Crime and Gun. That is true, essentially." Yeah, but, a bunch of people were messaging me about True Crime. I've never actually played it, but it seems to be pretty popular. Yeah. Uh, Rabadon says, will they bundle WoW subscriptions with Game Pass that go, uh, subs go up and WoW subscribers get more for their money? I don't know. I, who knows what they're going to do with that whole Blizzard thing. There's so much potential for them to do things. It's just not not it's really wild. sure. Um Jonas says, per Rand, you borrowed a Nintendo to prep for Microsoft buyout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny, right? Your bar goes to Nintendo and then Microsoft buys Nintendo. And your bar just can't escape Xbox. Yeah, Mike, Mike's just like desperately trying to escape Xbox and he's like every studio he joins, Microsoft buys them. Yeah, right? Oh, man. Um, Metal Morbo says, need a single player game for Orphea and Quira. Um, I have no idea what that means. And Mr. Irishman says, let oh. High Moon finish their Transformers trilogy. What, Jez? Oh, what was the last comment that you didn't get? Need a single-player game for Orphea and Quira. Q-H-I-R-A. Oh. They are heroes. Of, they are like original Heroes of the Storm characters. Oh. So Or- Orphea's like... It's a really cool character. She can like summon like tentacles and bite people and stuff it's she kind of reminds me of um jackie from the darkness do you ever play that yes i love the darkness i i i would like actually a darkness 3 to she's happen like, at some point she's like a mole goth jackie from the darkness <laughs> kind of but uh she's a cool character but she's she's only in heroes of the storm and a lot of people are like man she should like have her own game maybe but um but yeah and uh, the other character too is another Heroes of Storm character, but Orf- I think Orphe has got more legs than the other one, personally. But so, alas, let's 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 talk about the Phil comments and uh, the the Sony. So, what happened first? Sony finally responded to yes. Xbox buying Activision Blizzard, and do you have the uh, official quote up? Let me see if I can find it real quickly because we don't definitely don't want to misquote uh, PlayStation, right? Uh, let me see if I can find it here. It's got to be somewhere. Um, hold on. Let me try misquote to bring it up. PlayStation or Phil? No, but well, both. Um, uh, Sony well, responds. Here we go. Here we okay, go. I you. found it. Quote, we expect that Microsoft will abide by contractual agreements and continue to ensure Activision games are multi-platform. This happened on Thursday morning. And it was funny because I was talking to Cognito on the phone when we were, you know, talking about this. And I said to him, I was like, man, it's weird because when Bethesda was bought out, they didn't say shit. They didn't say anything about Bethesda being bought out. The only time they mentioned it was like Jim Ryan was like, Hey, it's a goodbye, you know, uh, you know, you, you, Phil's going to do what Phil's going to do or whatever. And 
I'd be interested in, in learning more about what they do with Bethesda games, right? But other than that, they didn't have an official response. But for this one, they did, because Call of Duty is important. And I said it in my video on yesterday, and I'm going to say it again here. When I first read that response, I was like, that smells like fear. That smells like they're afraid that they're about to get Call of Duty ripped from them, and they're like, we, we you better honor these arrangements, and you, you better keep these games on PlayStation. Like it almost, <laughs> right? It almost is like, or else, or like, or else what? Are you gonna sue yeah. us? Is that what you're gonna do? Like it almost was kind of was like, not gonna say deparation, but just like they were fearful, right? Yeah, it was. Um, it was definitely, definitely a very different tone that they took with Bethesda, and I think the the reason for that is pretty obvious. Bethesda doesn't drive anywhere near as much revenue for PlayStation as the singular entity, the ritual that is Call of Duty. So, you know, we didn't see we didn't see Sony lose 20 billion off its share price because of uh, Diablo. We didn't see it lose money because of the the potentiality for Warcraft to go to Xbox exclusively. exclusively. We saw them lose share for, share value because of Call of Duty, which is not only is it a massive driver of revenue, it's a massive driver of sentiment. If Call of Duty went fully exclusive to Xbox, people would leave PlayStation in droves, um, I believe. Or at least they'd buy an Xbox, which you know puts a dent in Sony's ability to keep people in its ecosystem because it's all about that storefront. It's all about software sales. It's not about console sales. It's always been about software sales and now it's about software sales and battle pass and microtransaction sales call of duty is a huge driver of revenue so of course they're going to be bothered about that and i think there is a there is a universe where they probably would sue microsoft if they did signal an intent to take that exclusively which is another reason why i think they should keep it multi-platform because it's just easier you know i think if they if they made it exclusive microsoft's gonna have a huge amount of headaches legally and otherwise like when um another reason my tweet um my tweet wasn't directed at like average game journalists it was partially inspired by all the fud i saw i saw in the tech press when amazon was pissed off that microsoft had acquired the pentagon's cloud contract when Microsoft, when Microsoft landed that lucrative Jedi Pentagon cloud contract, there was like all this stuff in the Amazon owned press that were like, oh, Microsoft's bad. They're buying up all this stuff. And, you know, you know, and it was an unfair purchase and all that kind of stuff. And they, I think they ultimately, Amazon sued them and they lost the contract, I think. Now, like the the Pentagon was like, Man, we don't we don't even want to deal with this anymore. We're just going to throw out this Jedi stuff. Or it was another it was another contract maybe that that got cancelled. I can't remember off the top of my head whether it was the Jedi Cloud contract. But my point is, there's there's a, there's a world where there's a huge amount of litigation and embarrassing arguments and fighting and headaches. And I don't think Microsoft wants that. I think they can just make it easier for everyone involved. If nice guy Phil just puts <laughs> Call of Duty on PlayStation, so. But yeah, there was definitely coming back to your original point. There was definitely a sense of trepidation that wasn't there when Bethesda was purchased. Bethesda doesn't have anywhere near as much. No, that's true. And also, b before their response, Sony's stock price took a hit of like fifteen percent and wiped out twenty billion in valuation. So you can maybe also look at their response was to calm investor worry so you know yeah the stock wouldn't drop uh anymore and you know they're like yeah well of course microsoft is going to honor their commitments they did it with bethesda they did it with all the other studios they bought of course they're going to do it with this but it was like the idea that like you know uh, essentially that and continue to ensure activision games are multi-platform like why does xbox have to continue to ensure that those games are multi-platform like, like, why is there something behind the scenes that we don't uh, we don't really uh, know about? 
Uh, JD Gamer says, I believe Colt Eastwood mentioned that the Sony COD agreements end in 2024. Can either of you confirm this or remark on it? I mean, I know that the Call of Duty marketing rights and those like exclusive content things are bought in chunks of time. I have no idea when that marketing arrangement ends. Uh, so it very well could be that it does end in 2024. Jed, do you have any idea when the PlayStation COD marketing deal ends? I have no idea. No idea. I think some. I think someone tweeted me that it was like they they run on three year contracts or something. But I, there's no. I don't have any official sourcing on that. Um, I could dig into it, but I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. So it's possible. Like, yeah, the existing deal. Like, so essentially, Microsoft would be forced to put call, keep on putting Call of Duty on there because the deals are already in place. Uh, we'll just have to wait. Uh, Carlton says, did Microsoft just buy a burning house? Um, that's that's something I've been thinking about a lot. Like, they've they've inherited a ton of risk. Well, yeah. Spent, like, well, didn't you write an article where, like, Phil, the world's watching. Like, yeah. you have to do this right, right? Yeah, basically. I, they've they've taken on the, the lawsuit into workplace practices. They've taken on games that are dying. You know, World of Warcraft's dying. Heroes of the Storm is basically dead. StarCraft is dead. Their esports division is losing money ham, hand over fist. Overwatch is dead. They've got they they're locked into an exclusivity deal for esports with YouTube. Nobody watches esports on YouTube. Nobody. Literally nobody watches esports on YouTube. So because they, they took Overwatch off Twitch, their esports division is dead. And I sure hope Google paid a lot of money because they basically killed their esports division with that deal. Um but you know, there's a lot of risk involved here, but also a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity, you know, a shining beacon, a rainbow, sunlit uplands of, you know, dew, dew drops on grassy meadows and all that stuff. Of opportunity out there, Ran. Opportunity. So I just have to wait and see how it pans out. Yeah. But, I mean, um, Phil, I Phil better be careful because he is pointing a target directly on him now because yeah. if he doesn't clean up what is going on there or he lets it continue and fester or get worse, that's on him. And, like, it does seem that he's up for the challenge because in his little article he said, when the deal closes, Activision Blizzard will report to me, CEO <laughs> Microsoft Gaming. It seems like he, he's oh, taking it yeah. on, so you better hope that you're up to the challenge on this because you got lawsuits from the governments, you got uh, you know uh, employees that are worried about all this, and uh, yeah, you better be on your A game. You know, you're right. Yeah. Like they basically did buy a company that was on fire, right? Or at least on the, fire. yeah, and. And it's Microsoft jobs to basically put out the fire and renovate the house. Renovate but the house. who knows? Not all renovations go well. And maybe them trying to put out the fire doesn't work. Who knows? But it's def definitely interesting to think about. And I hope Phil's up to the task. I think he is. So I think he really truly does care about it. Um, and I do find it funny when he was asked like a couple weeks before, it's like, what's your, you know, blah, blah, blah with, with Activision. And he's like, we're evaluating our relationship. And it's like, yeah, you were totally evaluating. You're valuing that relationship to seventy billion dollars, you know. So seventy billion dollars. Uh, Jeff Newton says, "Will Sony bring back Killzone because of the deal?" Well, I mean, if they're not losing COD, then no. And I think the Killzone website is like offline, so maybe not. I think SOCOM would come back first, personally, um, rather than than um, than Killzone. Um, DS Omen says if PlayStation gets Game Pass, what happens to Xbox? Would there even be a reason for anyone to buy an Xbox? Would Microsoft want to make Xboxes? This is the thing that people talk about when you know Grub talks about Game Pass going to Switch or Game Pass going to PlayStation. Like, what would be the record? Why would you buy an Xbox if you can get all the Xbox games on PlayStation? Right? Like, why wouldn't you just get a PlayStation because you can play all the PlayStation games and all the Xbox games? And 
I mean, we know for a fact that they were trying to get Game Pass on PlayStation. I mean, Phil's talked about that. He wants like a full Xbox experience and none of the companies want to give it to him. So we do know that they want him there. And with this, do they have the leverage to be able to do it? Potentially. And I mean, because it kind of gets into Phil's tweet, right? Uh, Which, let me bring up Phil's tweet because it set the world on fire yesterday. And this is this is why Jez was was doing victory laps today, and the reason why you guys are dunking on him. <laughs> he said that he had good calls this week with leaders at Sony. He confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activism Blizzard, with, of course, and our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Sony is an important part of our industry, and we value our relationship. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is if the shoe was on the other foot, and PlayStation had bought Activision Blizzard, Jim Ryan would not tweet this out. And Jim Ryan would not say that Xbox is an important part of our industry and we value our relationship. A hundred percent. But Jez is right. Phil's a, Phil's a nice guy and Phil truly believes that. But Phil is the only one who would literally say that about this. Jim Ryan wouldn't. And you know that to be true, Jez. You know? I definitely know it to be true. Yeah. I definitely so, know it to be true. Yes, they're going to honor existing agreements, and we don't know how long those existing agreements last. They could last for one year, two years, three years. Who really knows? But this is where the wordsmiths come in. This is why this this tweet is being (laughs) dissected all over the internet and on YouTube videos and in podcasts because of that our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Now, desire is an interesting word. Because I desire to be 250 pounds. I desire to be a millionaire. I desire to have a hot girlfriend. You know, it's nice to have desires, but it doesn't always happen that way. So people are looking at that word like desire, and it was like, that's the wiggle room, right? Wiggle. That's the wiggle room. So there's, there's, there's a few different ways you can take this tweet. You can take it straight up, face value, Phil saying, it's always going to be on PlayStation that it's basically Minecrafted at this point. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, that could happen. That, that could, Phil could be a hundred percent right. Uh, and being very Uh truthful with this and Jez would be Uh correct in his initial assessment. The call of duty is just too big. Blah, 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 blah. Right. I'm always right. Now, however, if you wanted to be a little bit more definitive in your statement, you could have said, "Hey, I confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of act uh, upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and Call of Duty will you could you could say and moving forward Call of we and moving forward Call of Duty will remain on PlayStation." That is a definitive sentence with no wiggle room. And you would imagine this tweet was seen by PR and legal, right? Because of what's yeah. going on. So there's a reason it's written the way it's written. So um, <laughs> <laughs> look, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say mm-hmm. that I don't. I honestly look when it We're came when it came to Bethesda. Phil never talked about like this with Bethesda, not once, right? No. So this is interesting, but to be fair, Call of Duty is way bigger than anything Bethesda makes. So there's a reason people freaked out about this because it was like Call of Duty. I honestly don't know what to think. With with Bethesda, I was 100% rock solid that they were going to keep the games exclusive to pump up Xbox Game Pass, to pump up the exclusive library because they didn't need to put those games on PlayStation. They don't need to. With this, I look at it and I'm like, I know Phil well enough to know that he tweeted that yesterday for a reason. And that reason very well could be to get in front of regulators. Now, I've seen some annulists like like Michael Pachter of of Redbrush, uh, a couple other people from like DFC saying that if this was being looked at very, if this was being scrutinized very closely by the government, there's a possibility that Microsoft wouldn't be able to even make or pull Call of Duty off of PlayStation. That would be a concession that they would have to make, essentially. So in that regard, 
you can think that Phil is saying this to keep regulatory pressure or off of it. Like, hey, we're we're going to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. And so when the deal gets looked at, they'd be like, well, you know, we're buying it, but we're not we're not removing the game from from there. We're we're, you know, playing nice. Because I really do think that I, I, they want this deal to go through no matter what. No matter what. They need this deal to go through. And if for this deal to go through, if they have to keep PlayStation, if they have to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation forever, then they'll do it. Because they need Blizzard. They need that, that big PC developer with that great legacy to help grow Game Pass and their presence on PC. And Blizzard is a damn good company to start with because they have nostalgia in a way that Xbox really doesn't. They have a huge fan base, right? That's a good starting point for building your PC empire. And two, and maybe even most importantly, is King, which nobody really talks about. Microsoft has zero presence on mobile. Well, maybe zero presence is is exaggerating because I think solitaire and all that stuff is on mobile, but Minecraft they, is pretty big on mobile, but that's it. Yeah. Minecraft, Minecraft. solitaire and fallout shutter. So it. they don't really have a presence on mobile and Phil's talked about reaching 3 billion gamers. You're not going to reach 3 billion gamers in this day and age without a mobile presence, a big mobile presence. And with this one move, they become like the fourth biggest mobile presence only behind 10 cent and nesties. And you're not buying either of one of those two. And the fifth biggest one was Zig Zigna. Which, screw that word. Literally Zigna. just bought by Take Two. So overnight, Microsoft, who didn't have a mobile presence, now has, uh, assorted by revenue, the fourth biggest. So if mm-hmm. you have to sacrifice Call of Duty to remain on PlayStation simply to make the deal go through so you can get King and have your mobile presence... And your PC developer to start your PC uh, dominance or PC like um, you know uh, growth, then that's what you'll have to do, right? Yeah. So I think they'll do whatever. <clears throat> I also think Phil is a little sly. He can be a little cheeky mm. sometimes. Mm. And I also do think that word <laughs> desire does mean something. There's a reason the word desire is used. And I do think you could have a scenario where in the future, Microsoft says, listen, we went to Sony and we said, we would love to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation, but we need Game Pass there to do it. And PlayStation are the ones who said no. We tried, gaming fans. We tried, PlayStation (laughs) fans. But Jim Ryan said no, so therefore you don't get it anymore. And... Or you can even look at it like he's talking simply about Warzone, right? Because there's Warzone and there's the regular Call of Duty games. So, so many different ways to read this tweet. You think he is just being 100% truthful and he's just telling the truth straight up. Call of Duty remain on PlayStation forever and you're taking your victory lap, right? Yeah, I do think he uses. I think he uses the word desire because he can't predict the future. There's a desire to acquire Call of Duty in the first place. He can't say we will keep it on there if he doesn't even get to acquire it. He can't say we will keep it on there if Sony doesn't come to their concessions. I think they will work out some kind of deal to get COD on PlayStation. And I do think there might be concessions have to be made. And I think, but I think the concessions will revolve around the cross play fee. I don't think they will rev- revolve around Xbox game pass. Cause I don't, Microsoft can't expect Sony to, they can't, they can't expect a strong arm, the Xbox brand onto PlayStation. But I do think the, the cross play fee presents like an existential problem for Microsoft who want a world where you can play across any device, um, be connected to any screen that you want, you know, whether it's Windows or Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo. So like Nintendo and Xbox don't charge a fee to turn on crossplay, but Sony does. 
And we found that out through the Epic Games lawsuit with Apple and the documents that were released as a part of that lawsuit. But that's just my speculation. I think Phil is just using the word desire because none of it's a done deal yet. I think Phil's a nice guy. I don't think he's sly around. I think he's a nice guy. Phil's a nice guy. Nice guy, Phil. Yeah. Come by our. Come by our, man. Look, I'm still going to go with my initial prediction. What? That Warzone remains on PlayStation. And when the deals run out and Microsoft positions Call of Duty as a no longer an annual franchise, those premium versions will remain Xbox exclusive. Hmm. And it's just a prediction. I'm probably wrong on this, but that was my initial thought. And I still sort of think that's going to be the case unless they... And it's certainly... Well, I mean, could they even cut a deal? Because they don't even own... That's the other thing. Like, they don't own Activision Blizzard yet. So, I guess maybe him talking to them and saying, well, we desire to keep it there, but I don't know. I I don't... (laughs) The the thing is, it's like, they didn't talk like this with Bethesda at all. This this is a totally different thing. And understandably so... Ten... It's like... The deal is ten times bigger. Literally ten times bigger. You know, it's it's a it's a seismic event in capitalism. You know, you had the guy from the World Bank saying like, you know, it's disgusting that a company could spend this much money on another company when like all the donations combined for like you know development of poorer nations amounts to like twenty eight billion dollars or something. You know, there's some there is something to be said about the the system we live in, but like let's not get into that discussion now. But it's a huge, it's a seismic deal. It's like, isn't it, isn't it, I'm sure I read somewhere that it's the biggest liquid cash acquisition in history. No, because Not- I think like AOL Time Warner was like a hundred and... But wasn't that a lot of that stock? 50 billion maybe? Oh, you're wasn't talking about stocks? liquid cash only? Hmm. Yeah, it was, I think, I think I read that. Or at least it's one of the biggest liquid cash acquisitions ever. Like there's there's been acquisitions that were this big, but they included stocks as part of the deal, which comes with a comes with an implication like, yeah, we'll give you stocks, which incentivizes you to help us make this company bigger, you know. But like when it's liquid cash, the shareholders are, are exiting. They can cut and run. They can put all this scandal stuff behind them and finally get a, a profit out of their their um get a profit or like whatever you know benefits they can out of a company that's probably probably wouldn't have recovered its share price for a very long time you know yeah someone in the chat the wrwk says this was the biggest cash deal ever so so yeah it was it sounds like it was the biggest cash deal ever so um it's 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 a seismic event and i think like it's it's no wonder emotions are running high a lot of people are trying to make sense of it a lot of people are trying to figure out where, which side of the debate they lie on, which side of the debate their audiences lie on, you know. Um, and then there's me, who you know goes against what my audience thinks. <laughs> so, tells you all, I think it should be multi-platform because I think Phil's a nice guy. Phil's a good guy. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be mean like that, and he wouldn't break the ritual. It's yeah. a ritual. I mean, no I th- look. I think you own the studio. It should be exclusive. I would expect if PlayStation to buy Take Two, that Grand Theft Auto would be exclusive, and I wouldn't complain about it. I'd just be like, "Well, that's business. You want to play Grand Theft Auto, get a PlayStation. You want to play Call of Duty, you should play Xbox." Like, uh, that's just. I, I I think I'm more bothered by like timed exclusivity. That, I, you know what? I am. Like, I have no problem with companies buying other companies, right? So, like the idea of like. Sony buying, you know, Housemark to make games or whatever. That's fine by me, right? The idea, like, and Sony's bought a lot of companies. So if Sony went out and bought Capcom and Resident Evil was on PlayStation, I'd be like, all right, I guess I'm, I'm playing Resident Evil on PlayStation. That seems better to me than Sony, essentially what they're doing with Square Enix right now, where like virtually every game from Square Enix is not coming to Xbox because of reasons, and they don't even own the company. I personally mm. think that's a, that's worse, because uh, it's like you don't own that company. 
Like, so if they did, if they did those Square Enix, I'd be like, I just would, all right, well, you own the company. The games are yours. You could put them wherever you want. So understandably, you wouldn't put them on your competitor's platform, right? So with Xbox... It almost feels spiteful, you know. There's like an element of spite there. Yeah. You know. And with, so with Xbox, it's like, yeah, you, you just bought Activision Blizzard. The game should be exclusive. Like, you own the company now, you, right? Like, and I don't like and it's all just the bullshit that comes with it. Yeah, and you own like all the the the, the drama that comes with everything there. And look, Call, know, Call of Duty's been on you know the decline. What it reminds me of, Ron. right? Yeah, I mean, Call like this it's is why Call of Duty. Game last year. <laughs> this is still the biggest game last year. Though. It declined, but it was still the biggest game. That's how big Call of Duty is. It's just massive. It's beyond anything. I don't know, because like uh, Thanero says, how is timed worse? You just got to wait. There's this thing where it's just like, you already, like, when the you company owns another company, it's yeah. just like, you know what? That's just where you're playing it. There's no questions about when or, like, Final Fantasy VII Remake was supposed to come to Xbox. Where is it? It doesn't, it's not. Any of these other games, like, they may never come. So the idea is, like, you just got to wait. I mean,. How, how long do I have to wait? It's just easier to me where it's just like, you own the company. If you want to play that game, that's where I have to play it. If I want, you know, uh, 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 you know, like uh, a Frosty, I got to go to Wendy's. If I want, you know, a McDouble, <laughs> I got to go to McDonald's. If I want to watch The Witcher, I got to I gotta load up Netflix to watch it. If it you want to watch Chicken Little, you got to use You know, Netflix. if I want to save 20% on shaving my balls, I, I got to go to manscaped.com and use X code XB2 <laughs> at the checkout. It just, it, it kind of <laughs> works in my brain that way. It's just like, if if I want to watch Wheel of Time, I got to go to Amazon Prime, right? So, I don't know. It's just like, if you own the company, I'm whatever, that's perfectly fine. I just... So with Activision Blizzard, I'm just like, well, Microsoft owns them, so the game should only be on Xbox platforms and PC and streaming. Like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when Sony threw Hello Games under the bus when um when uh that what's it called now? That game, the game with space, the Hello Games made. What's it called? The what? Brand. What's that game called that's in space that Hello Games made? Jeez. Um, what is the name of that game? I can't remember what it's called. I'm get, I remember the name of the dev. I remember uh, Sh- no, Man's no, Man's Sky. Sky. no Man's Sky. Yeah, No Man's yeah. Sky. It's like, I, I was like, Sean, Sean Murray. And then what's Sean Murray's Twitter handle? Oh yeah, No Man's Sky. <laughs> that's how I remembered the game. But like, it reminded me of like how Sony threw No Man's Sky under the bus. Because they had like it, they had like No Man's Sky as an exclusive, and they were doing all the marketing for it. And then No Man's Sky went to shit, and then Sony was like, "Oh well, it wasn't our fault," you know. And they kind of, they kind of threw them under the bus, right? But if you own the company, you can't really throw them under the bus because it's your mistake to own, you know. It's your mistake to own. So I don't know. I guess I don't know. <clears throat> the Minecraft situation is like Minecraft already existed everywhere, and I do feel that it would be have been wrong to pull Minecraft away. And they didn't. And they were rewarded with the biggest game ever. Um, which is why I think keeping Warzone on PlayStation would be the right thing to do because it's basically just like Elder Scrolls Online. It's a ever evolving living game. But like the the next Call of Duty is just box it's just like a box plat- premium purchase. It's like you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not in, you're not entitled to every single game that comes out. So yeah, I mean, who? Why couldn't the game go exclusive? I mean, at the end of the day, does it matter to me? No, it doesn't, because I was gonna play the game on Xbox regardless. Does it matter to me if it's exclusive? Not really at all. Um, same thing with Bethesda. I just would play the Bethesda games on Xbox anyways. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's because like, I just, I have all the systems. So if a franchise I liked went somewhere else, I just were like, well, you got to play on a PlayStation. I want to play horizon forbidden West. There's only one place to play it at least right now before it becomes the PC at some point. But you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like almost, I almost feel like the timed exclusive deals are worse. 
uh, to a certain degree. Know. But I'm kind, I'm kind of just. I mean, I just it's just capitalism, baby. You know, I think Sony, the Sony act cutthroat because they have to. It's it's their whole business, you know, and they can't afford to drop seventy billion on on a studio like Activision. So they do these sort of like sneakier kind of deals where like they say they tell they tell xbox people um the game the game it's actually very clever right of sony when they release these trailers they put at the bottom this game will be exclusive for one year and then a one year comes and it's still exclusive hang on a sec why is it not coming to xbox that undermines xbox because it makes it look like the, the game is arbitrarily skipping Xbox because Xbox and Xbox fans aren't important. So like it, it's it's they get like a double dose of of like pain to dish out with that because they claim it's a year exclusivity and here we are two years later and it's still not here. It's still not here, you know. So, but I think that's those are the kind of tactics Sony has to use to stay competitive. You know, that, that's what they have to do. Because mm. they are not in the same liquid cash situation that Microsoft is in, you know. So I I don't blame them for doing that stuff. I don't blame them for buying exclusivity on Final Fantasy, you know. I used to I used to have this mindset that it was like, oh, it's anti-consumer, it's anti-competitive, but it's not really. It's just it sucks for consumers. It does suck, but they're a business and they're doing business things, so. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, DS Omen uh, says, if PlayStation gets Game Pass... Oh, wait, I think I already read that one. Uh, Hakan says, Xbox was on life support, remember? Yep. OH says, Lord. where was this angry mob when we were trying to get a third mobile OS, mobile OS and stop consolidation? Now they're happy paying for $19 cleaning cloths. I'm assuming that's <laughs> about like the iOS. Yeah, because iOS and Google dominate the mobile market, right? Yeah, because um, you didn't buy a Windows phone. I actually had Windows phones, so shut up. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, oh yeah, because I got achievements, were, bro. Achievos. Yeah. Man, what if what if they bought back Windows phone and then put Candy Crush as an exclusive on Windows phone? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Chinook that says, was, that, oh, that, Jez was talking about Jeff Bezos' company talking a bunch of smack through a certain journalism site. Hmm. Yeah. I, it was, it was, the tweet was aimed at that kind of outlet. Yeah. You know? Uh, you watch the Post, your BBC, your CNN, TV types who are earning tons of money, talking about moralizing consolidation while also being very rich. Uh, Theo says, Spider-Man is next. <clears throat> it's not out of the realm of possibility. Microsoft goes to Marvel to try and get Spider-Man games in Game Pass. I mean, what if Phil was like, I saw some people suggest this. What if Phil's like, we'll keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. You got to give us Spider-Man in, in return. A tit for tat. Tit for tat, Jez. Give us Spider Man for COD. Um, oh man, I don't see. Uh, man, I don't like Spider Man. I know. You know you what don't. game I'd rather have? Uh, Bloodborne. Well, yeah, Bloodborne too. Radimus. So the funny thing about COD is when the contract expires, Xbox will have the power of negotiations. They could potentially push PlayStation in certain directions. Brett says two companies that could still be bought if. Two companies that could still be bought if bought in whole while sidestepping antitrust are Time Warner and Bandai Namco. Lou says, this is the start of a new gen. It's not Xbox One versus PS4. It's a fresh start. Do they need to keep COD going just to have a studio make a new FPS IP? I mean, I'm always for new IP. So, uh, Mahler X says, let's say Microsoft simply decides not to make Call of Duty ever again. Are they supposed to continue making it just for PlayStation? Doesn't make sense. That's interesting, Jez. What do you say of that? What if Microsoft decided not to make any more CODs? Uh, that would be incredibly Dumb. unlikely. Yes. <laughs> um, um, but I do think I do think they are going to liberate Raven and some of the other studios from making COD and be like, you can take a break from doing COD support and make something unique and creative or whatever. And also, those rumors of it going to a biannual... I think that's got to happen for COD going to biannual. The, the fact they're trying to cram like unique takes on what is basically the same formula year in, year out is going to kill the franchise in a way that Activision killed Guitar Hero 
there was a point where like Guitar Hero was launching left, right, and center the same game every time, every time the same game. People got sick of it. They got absolutely sick of it. And like I feel like they're gonna end up doing that to Call of Duty. You know, I think it's better to take it to biannual and, yeah. and all that stuff. But I don't think we'll see it go away. I do think we'll see more creativity from those studios though. Uh, Andrew says, why is every narrative about this acquisition only focused on the console side, which is definitely not why they did this. PC mobile were the main reasons. I mean, we've talked about that. I mean, I, I think I specifically said King was a big reason for it, right? Multiple times. Yeah. Uh, yes. it, it, the reason this deal makes so much sense to Microsoft is because it literally checks all three. It's like you get a P, you get a mobile platform check, which they needed. You get a piece, a, a, a a, a PC developer that has a, a large fan base with huge legacy nostalgic titles that could help you grow the PC side of Game Pass, check mark. And then you get Activision, which has a whole bunch of IP. You get the biggest annual game, FPS, that is going to drive Game Pass like no nothing else ever could. And then you even get like kid friendly stuff. You get your Toys for Bob, kid friendly developer. You know, make have it make banjo check. It like checks everything that Xbox was essentially looking for in a way that Ubisoft do- doesn't, Warner Brothers games doesn't. Like, sure, Warner Brothers games checks marks like individual games itself, like fighting game, superhero game, you know, kids games. But they didn't have a mobile platform, and they didn't have a PC thing, and you don't own those IPs. They'd all have to be like licensed. So when you look at it, this was probably like. As no wonder they jumped on this because it literally gave them everything they could possibly want, right? Yep. Crazy when you think about it like that. Uh, Chinakai says if Fran's future happens, what would happen if Raven Software just randomly said they didn't want to do Warzone anymore? Um, then maybe somebody else would do it? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe they find uh. the people within Raven to you know, get them out of there and get people in that want to work on it and then have part of Raven make something else. I don't know. Mr. Irishman says, do you guys think it's possible for Call of Duty to be used as a bargaining chip for Xbox to get the likes of Spider-Man and Final Fantasy? Well, I mean, Final Fantasy, no, because that's Square Enix. And I really doubt, like, the idea... I mean, it'd be... (laughs) Could you imagine Phil on the phone with Jim and being like, give us Spider-Man and you can have Call of Duty? Like... I don't think something like that goes on. So no, I don't think so. Yeah, man, I I had no idea how popular Spider Man was, man. It's huge, bro. Like, I I like, I don't I don't know if it's a British thing, but when I was a kid, it was all Batman. It was all Batman, not Spider Man. Uh, Brett says, or is, or is it more of a recent thing? I don't know. Uh, Spider Man's always been, I think, pretty big, bigger than Batman, even though Batman's pretty big. Uh, Brett says, Phil talking to Jim after the AB acquisition is complete. You know how I said I keep Call of Duty on PlayStation? I lied. <laughs> <laughs> JD Gamer says, what happens after this deal closes and Microsoft is then free to really go after those individual IP exclusivity a la Street Fighter, Tech, and Resident Evil? Well, the thing with that is I don't think Phil likes doing that. So I wouldn't expect them to do that unless, like, if they wanted Street Fighter, they'd have to buy Capcom. Same thing with Resident Evil. Like, I don't think you'll see Xbox go and try to do the timed exclusivity stuff that PlayStation does. And I think Jez would agree with me on that. Um, and Artemis yeah, says, I- Jez, your tweet reminded me of that Carly Simon song, You're So Vain, that caused a bunch of journalists upset for, for no reason. You know the song he's talking about? I don't know the song, but I, th- I wasn't trying to piss off the people that got pissed off. Because it's true. A lot of game journalists aren't making amazing money especially if they live in places like san francisco new york like san Fran isn't like got six figures like if you're earning 100k in in san francisco you technically count as being below the poverty line because of how know. much everything costs there i don't i don't know but someone told me that and they were like you know um i come i'm like the the job i had before this was minimum wage so right now i feel like a millionaire you know I mean, I don't, I don't earn six figures by any means, but it's, it's kind of like I do feel like a hell of a lot more privileged than I know I could be, like from when I was working part time minimum wage and I had no money, you know. But I don't know. 
I you know, didn't mean to the, piss everyone the, off. The so song, much. Jazz, says, you're so vain, you probably think this song is about you. Ah, right. So <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah. And uh, Ultra Watch says, what's the chance Toys for Bob remakes Banjo 1 and 2? I think there's a good chance they do something with Banjo. Yeah, I agree. Um... Do you want to uh, do you want to end the show here and take some questions, Jez? You getting tired? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's uh, getting it's almost midnight here, so let's take some questions from the awesome peeps. Thanks yep. everyone for joining us. If Thanks. you're gonna filter out, um, you know, give give a give a check on manscape.com. Use our code XB2. You know, they they don't just do shaving of the balls. They do really good razors for face shaving your beard too. And I'm a big fan of the boxes. I keep saying this, man. But I'm a big fan of the boxes. So thank you very much to Manscaped for sponsoring the show. And uh, drop us some questions. Yeah. yeah go around. You feeling good, man? I- I'm feeling, feeling good. good. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the show, make sure you hit the like button on your way out. And uh, this will be up on podcast services as soon as possible. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. We love doing the show for you. Thank you guys for the support. It's always incredible to see it. And uh phew. Uh, the, the, I mean, the gaming industry has changed forever, and it's like kind of crazy to think about it. I'm probably going to make a video about something tomorrow. And I still got my Xbox predictions for 2022 I want to put out. So there still be some videos I'm going to be putting out the, this weekend and maybe next week. And who knows what the hell is going to happen next week. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get some questions. That's all says, do you think Game Pass will come to Steam with Blizzard games? Well, I think, Jez, you said that you mm-hmm. thought... Blizzard w- games wouldn't go to Steam at all, right? So I I'm not sure about this because as we've mentioned, Phil's a nice guy. That is true. Phil is a nice guy. So maybe like Phil Curry's favor with the PC gaming crowd by bringing those games to Steam, and maybe Phil's got a long-term vision of building up a rapport with Steam to one day buy Steam because I think really Microsoft wants to own Steam one day. Mm. Microsoft kind of lost control of its own platform by not having Steam. So um, I do think Microsoft would like to buy Steam, but maybe that would be the thing that upsets regulators because Steam is basically the entire PC retail market. Yeah, that would definitely probably be Monopoly. Yeah. Because they have have their own and then they bought... Yeah, that would definitely probably be a Monopoly. Yeah. But it's all, it's in it's within their interest to have a vibrant PC market, and the Steam Deck is powered by Linux, Linux Proton, and of course, like you're not going to be able to get Blizzard games on Proton without installing Windows on the Steam Deck, which is going to be a horrible experience, probably. So you know, I think Microsoft probably might want to look at doing that because it helps Windows. You know, it helps Windows and it helps the PC ecosystem and keeps Apple's Macs at bay with mm. their nineteen dollar cloths. Um, I want to get this question around from everyone's idol. He says, "Did you discuss limited run will now include Xbox games?" I did, did see, see that? that tweet. Yeah. So, so you- uh, limited run for people who don't know, they make collectors' editions of indie games and director digital games that typically don't have. A sort of retail publisher behind them, don't they? If I'm if I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the reason they weren't Xbox, they weren't doing Xbox games, is because the print number Xbox requires is really high, right? Ah, right. So they've changed their rules for limited. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, right. So which is good. There's a lot of there's a lot of legacy. There's a lot of weird legacy rules at Xbox and Microsoft that. You know, we we heard that um, Halo was hindered by Microsoft's weird rule of you can only have contractor for one year and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So um, it's cool to see them open that up. Uh, Ermi says, uh, Ren and Jez, considering the classics from Sierra Online and Activision's Pitfall River Raid, you think a revamp game room could return? Game room? Mm. What is that? I think game room was a 360 app that had a bunch of like arcade games in it or something. If I'm remembering correctly, I didn't really use it because I wasn't really interested in the games, but I guess it's po- I guess anything is possible at this point. Mm. Uh, Arafat says, uh, when will Phil, when Phil become Itachi Uchini 
or Ichuchi. I don't know what that is. Me, what is what's that, Jez? Hmm. Say that again. Sorry. I mean, I don't know how you say it. Itachi Uchi Uchia Uchia. With regards to what? I don't know. When Phil become Ita- Itachi Uchida? Is that like I... Japanese for big boss or something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Sorry. Uh, Ryan Clarify. says, do you know if the coalition is working on a new IP or is it an existing IP? Uh, we know that they're working on a new project. I think Jeff said it was a new IP. You know, but maybe that new IP turns into an existing IP like Gears. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, let's see what else. Mm. Oh, it's from Naruto apparently. I, well, I've never seen Naruto, so I have no idea what it, that is. I mean, I know what Naruto is because I have friends that are anime heads, but I've never seen their anime Naruto. head. Yeah, they're anime freaks. No, you, they're weebs. They're they're weebs. Yes. So I, I know weebs. what Naruto is, but I've never seen an episode, and I have no idea who Itachi whatever is. <laughs> I haven't seen Naruto either because Naruto is a, a casual anime for casual anime people. You should know that. I don't, I, you should know I don't get. Anime. I won't get uh, anime references. <laughs> um, oh man. Uh, Virgil says, do you think we could get a new prototype game when the deal goes through? If so, it could be Xbox's infamous. Maybe. Maybe we could, I think, s- we could see something like that. I think the amount of people who have been talking about prototype suggests to me that we could see a prototype. Like, who who would be a good studio for prototype, though? Mm-hmm. Like, who, who does open world at Microsoft? 343. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Uh, Shaz says, do you guys read the article that stated Sekiro is not an IP that will be acquired by the deal? Love Xbox, love PlayStation, love Nintendo, love you guys. Yeah, I believe that uh, Sekiro was owned by From Software and Activision just published. So I don't know if that means yeah. Xbox would own the publishing rights of of um, Sekiro. I mean, it's I guess it's possible. It is possible. Um, that would be interesting because it'd give it'd give Microsoft their sort of Bloodborne competitor in a way, even though Bloodborne hasn't even got a PS5 enhanced version yet. Um, but I think it's just because FromSoft's really busy. Apparently, From Software From Software is making Elden Ring, which is going to have some kind of service component. They're also supposedly making Armored Core, and they're also supposedly making another new IP. So I think they're pretty damn busy right now. And probably not thinking about Bloodborne for PS5 or Bloodborne for PC right now. But it makes me wonder if, like, that studio that made Demon Souls, maybe they could pick up Bloodborne and port it or something? Because aren't they designed as a remaster studio? I don't know. Mm. I do want to play Demon Souls, though. After playing Dark Souls, and now I'm like, I need a PlayStation for Bloodborne and Demon yeah. Souls. Uh, Fanero says, what are the chances of Xbox's move causing Amazon and Google to make big purchases, too? Honestly, Google yeah, Google's probably done, and I, I would probably even think Amazon is probably out at this I point. Think, I think Amazon, I don't know. They're basically, there needs to be someone at Amazon who can sort of make the case to the new CEO, because I don't think Jeff, Be- Jeff Bezos is stepping down, already has stepped down as CEO, because he wants to focus on his space bullshit. And um, the new CEO came from the cloud division. So, like, Amazon does have cloud gaming tools. Like, they make Lumberyard, which was used to power New World. And I think some of the games are being made on it. Like, they're sort of Unreal Engine competitor. But I don't know if Amazon has the balls, the manscaped.com shaved balls Mm. to compete with the $70 acquisition. I don't think they realize how much money they need to put up this is like Hollywood level shit, you know. It's like Disney level stuff. Um, but who knows? Like maybe there's someone that people are having a meeting at Amazon right now, working out if they really want to get into this space, or if they're just happy with like making the Wheel of Time TV show for Rand and Lord of the Rings, which is supposedly the most expensive TV show ever. Yes, I think one of the one of the things that might be holding Amazon back, actually, is because of how much they have to spend on prime to compete with disney and netflix 
Because like the the upfront investment of Lord of the Rings TV show has been absolutely massive, like huge. It's supposedly the most expensive TV show ever made. So I'm wondering if Amazon's just thinking like, we can either focus on that or we can continue delivering value for Amazon Prime, competing with Disney and Netflix because they don't have, Amazon does not have the IP that Disney has. They just don't. So like maybe Amazon thinks we could spend that money on Warner Brothers instead and make Batman TV show and stuff like that. So maybe Amazon Luna doesn't try and compete with Xbox directly because like all of Amazon Luna's games are PC games anyway. So they're, they're competing with Steam, basically. I don't think, I don't think Amazon's got the balls, man. Mm. I'm thinking, I often think about Apple. I often think about Apple because Apple makes its own silicon now. And like they are talking about GPU performance for gaming and stuff in their in their laptops, and they are exploring that space. They have to know how much of a sort of market they're sort of missing out on with their with their Macs and all this stuff because they haven't really thought about that space. But Apple's getting into the media space too, and they started making TV shows. But there's also that weird rumor around that Apple wants to make a car. Yeah, right. Apple wants to compete with Tesla. So maybe Apple's just thinking like we could ditch this game and stuff and just make our car instead and focus on growth that way. But I have heard, Rand, and this is a little tiny leak. Ooh, a little tiny leak. All right, hit us up. Can't wait for the articles to be written. Let's go. I've been hearing for a while Uh that Apple has been poaching Xbox engineers to make its own console. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I, I've heard that for ages, that Apple was exploring making a video game console. And I don't know if it's like going to be a VR play or a metaverse thing or, or something like that. But some of the engineers that Apple's poached from Microsoft were because they wanted to explore making their own console. So I don't know if I don't know if that that'll come to fruition. I don't know if they've cancelled it already because Apple explore a ton of stuff and they've already they've already cancelled the Apple Car once. You know, um, they they've they've cancelled they they had an Apple Car that was they were making and they cancelled it reportedly and now they might be exploring trying having another go at it. So may, maybe they just like you know gave up already. But I often think about that. Like, which company would really? want to compete with them at that level but the real answer is tencent at the end of the day is tencent microsoft looks at tencent so people are like that's not a tiny leak i mean it's tiny because my sourcing on it isn't great so like if you if you someone listens to this thinking like i'm gonna i'm gonna write an article about this i don't have amazing sourcing on this i have no documents i have no photographs or whatever so um i don't know but it's just something i heard doesn't matter articles coming in by the end of tonight, uh, X, uh, insider uh, industry insider says Apple console coming, <laughs> Xbox engineers making it, or whatever the hell we title. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Sir Blood Raven says, Question for Jez When are we going to play Minecraft ju- Dungeons? Hmm. Man, I haven't touched Minecraft Dungeons for ages. Like, you know what happened with me in Minecraft Dungeons? I had a build. I had a build that was like, um, I had a specific build that used souls and a bow. And then I logged on one day and they nerfed my build. Oh, and I couldn't nice. kill anything. Yeah, they nerfed my build and I couldn't kill anything. And I was trying to play it and my play style was broken and I couldn't kill any mobs because they'd nerfed my weapons. And I just never went back to it because I couldn't get any good weapons anymore. So I was just like, screw this. <laughs> And I dropped it. But it's a shame because I, I, I was enjoying it for a while, but I don't know. I'm going to be over all over Dying Light in the next week, you know. So watch out for my Dying Light 2 early impressions next week. We have a preview coming up and then review very soon afterwards. So I'll be playing Dying Light and then uh, probably playing Elden Ring. Yeah. One Bad Mother says, Breaking news from Jez's Ivory Tower. Have a great weekend, friends. <laughs> Uh, little Mir- Muru says, "Hey Jez, do you think uh, Final Fantasy fourteen will come?" I honestly don't know. I think so- S- F- Square Enix are in a they're in a bit of a state right now. Square Enix pulled the game from sale because their servers are full. 
they've released an article saying that um, we can't grow our servers because we can't get any chips. And they were, they, were given, they were given a timeline of like the next six months. If you add a whole new platform, you're going to need even more servers. So the problem with Final Fantasy XIV is they can't even meet demand for the platforms that they're on. So if they add Final Fantasy XIV to Xbox, that's just going to make the, the problem worse. So because of the chip shortage, ironically, I don't think we're going to see Final Fantasy XIV on Xbox anytime soon. Mm. But we might see World of Warcraft on Xbox. Uh, Tip Top Dalton says, Ran and Jazz, if Game Pass goes to PlayStation, wouldn't Spartacus have to come to Xbox? Not necessarily. Eh, nah. Microsoft and Sony have different goals. Like Sony wants to sell consoles and grow its platform like that. Microsoft wants to be on every screen. That they would put Game Pass on the Switch. I totally believe Call of Duty will come to Nintendo Switch via the cloud in the future. Um when Microsoft's involved. So um but they have different goals. So I don't think I don't think Sparkus will come to Xbox. Um uh, Monkey Punch says, "Hey Jez, will you think Xbox will take games away from Sony?" Uh, I don't think they'll take games away that are contractually thing uh, like in place. Like, like Rand said earlier, like they've announced Diablo Four for PlayStation. No, they have probably have they not? Diablo, as far as I know, Diablo Four has not been announced for any platforms. Right outside okay. of PC. <clears throat> well. If Diablo 4 is under contract, then you'll see it come to PlayStation. And you'll see contracted games come to PlayStation. But games that aren't in development yet and haven't even been assigned to a platform yet, don't have even dev kits or whatever, they've just been developed on PC, I think a lot of those games will go exclusive. I expect like a Spyro, future Spyro game or a future Crash game to be exclusive to Xbox or, and the cloud and PC and... Um, Warcraft, which isn't even on any consoles yet, I expect that to be exclusive to Xbox as well, especially in a world where Final, uh, Final Fantasy XIV is de facto exclusive to PlayStation. But yeah, um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I don't think they'll take games away. I mean, games that are already there will stay. I think if I think if Call of Duty stays on PlayStation, then I think everything else remains exclusive after that. Like, uh, but I go, we'll find out eventually. Uh, Mr. J says, you think Phil will bring back old Activision Marvel games? Probably not. Licensing and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, RWK says, y'all think a new Call of Duty comes out this year? Yes, I believe it's supposed to be Modern Warfare 2. It's supposed to be Infinity Ward's game. And people got their fingers crossed that that will bring, uh, uh, that'll bring Call of Duty back. Because uh, this Vanguard uh, really cratered. <laughs> people did not like it. Uh, Whittier says, Jez, do you see the Dice Game of the Year nominations? No Forza, no Psychonauts, no Metro Dread, and only one game playable on Xbox. Um, Sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> he was wondering if you saw the Dice Game of the Year nods. No, I didn't. I did not see that. No Forza, um, no Psychonauts, no Metro <clears throat> Dead, Dread, and only one game on Xbox. What, what, were the, what were they? It was like Returnal, Ratchet. I, I, I only... I don't really know the rest of them. I, it, it Takes Two, I think, was one. Uh, I'm not sure what the other ones were. Uh, Supernova right. says, is this question too early for what to expect from the E3 2022 conference for Xbox? Hashtag Randall Balls. <laughs> Randall Ball. uh, maybe a little bit. We got, some, we got some ideas. Like, I think Todd Howard has basically been out there and said, you're going to see Starfield revealed this year in full. Yeah. So, like, if that if we we're talking about the E3 season because E3 doesn't exist anymore, I still think they're going to do a, a summer marketing cycle as they hype up into the autumn quarter four. So like we're going to get events around when E3 would be like June, May, July, August, maybe even. Um, so yeah, Starfield will be there, Redfall will be there, Contraband will be there. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else. I'd have to think about it. What do you think, Rand? Is there anything I've not thought of there? Contraband, Redfall, Starfield? Hellblade? I don't know, maybe Hellblade not. I don't know. I have to Road. think about it. I'm not in that mode of thinking what's going to be at E3 just yet. So, uh, yeah. I think we'll see Avowed. I think we might see Arcanes of the Project. 
I'm praying that it's prey to. I'm See praying that it's prey to, yeah. Uh, that it's prey to. Ultra Watt says Blizzard was teasing game announcements. Any idea? I I know nothing about Blizzard. That'd be Jez. I've heard about a couple of games Blizzard has in its roadmap. I can't talk about them at the moment. But I'm in terms of big games, I don't know. I know about some smaller games they're making. Um but I feel like if you're putting that into an art if you're putting that into an article, there might be teasing something bigger or an expansion. I don't know. Mm. But it's weird because wasn't BlizzCon cancelled? Didn't they already yes. say BlizzCon's not happening? So yeah. maybe maybe something that would typically announce a BlizzCon, like a future expansion for WoW. Because WoW WoW's had its last patch now. There's no more patches for Shadowlands, which means we're gonna have a new expansion soon. Maybe they announce that. I don't know. Oh, we got special Nick in the chat. Yeah. Special Nick in the house. He he's been bugging us to do Xbox four next week. Xbox four? Yeah. Mm. Me, you, mm. him and John. But I mean we're really gonna do a podcast with the guy that said a week ago Xbox wasn't gonna buy Activision. How'd that look for our rep? You know what I mean? Mm, that's true. <laughs> Uh, James says, do you guys like tacos, hard shell, or soft? I do like tacos, and I like the soft shell. Jazz? I've only had one taco. One? In my life. Dude, there's no there's no real taco places in, where, in the town I live in England, but there is a Mexican restaurant that just opened in my town in Germany, but it's all shut down because of COVID right now. So I need to go and try getting... Some tacos, maybe. You but should. no, I'm I'm taco ignorant, man. Yeah, you definitely are taco ignorant. We don't have Mex- good Mexican food uh, in England. Betrayal, I think that name is. Elden Ring is probably going to be game of the year. Is from software on the table and is now not the perfect time to buy EA. I think if anybody buys from software, it's PlayStation. No. And no. it's now the t- now not is and is now not the perfect time. Uh, not for Xbox, because they're not buying anybody until this deal goes through. Maybe for somebody else? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, they got Apex Legends. You got Respawn doing stuff. You got the multi-platforms with like FIFA and, and Madden that are always huge. That bring in a bunch of money. Uh, you got Battlefield. But shoot, Battlefield, talk about a franchise that it's on fire at this point. Hi, man. I, I tweeted out the other day, like, I'm I'm thanking God every day that Microsoft didn't buy Ubisoft or EA. Mm. Like, EA is a shadow. Like, Bioware is a shadow of its former self. Battlefield is a catastrophe. Titanfall is dead. And then you've got, like, you, you know, what have you got to look forward to then? Like, a Dragon Age, that might not be good. And a Mass Effect, that might not be good, because what's happened, Bioware is not the same Bioware it used to be. You've got Battlefield that's going free to play in desperation. You've got Star Wars Battlefront 2 that's been abandoned. And um, then what you got? Plants vs. Zombies on mobile? Great. I don't write EA anymore. I mean, yeah, they make a lot of money with FIFA Ultimate Team, but that's all they do. FIFA Ultimate Team. They're like a one-trick pony. Kind of like Take-Two with Grand Theft Auto shark cards. Um... Yeah, like people in chat saying the only good part of EA is Respawn. Like, could they just get Respawn? Yeah, that'd be great. But I don't think they could. So, um, yeah, EA has a lot of great IP, but they're not in a position to use that IP right now, I don't think. So it, it'd be a mess if they bought it. If they bought EA, it would be a damn mess. Um, and Ubisoft's Ubisoft. Blandy soft, as I'm going to call mm. them from now on. I don't want Ubisoft. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to buy Ubisoft if you're getting their games in Ubisoft Plus or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, Installation 7 says, could we get new Avatar features in games like in the 360 era? Would love to see Avatars get more love. So many cool features could be implemented. I know Terry Meyerson was a big fan of uh, Avatars. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> God the Blessed One says, the amount of people that don't realize the importance of the word desire and Phil's statement. He's saying if Sony puts, games, ga- puts Game Pass on their box, they'll get COD, in my opinion. Um, and Supernova says, is it true about Starfield being delayed for a year and a half due to launch issues and dishonest promises of Cyberpunk 2077? Was this about Starfield being delayed a year and a half? I haven't heard anything like that. I think that 
weeks. So I think we'd know if that was happening. Unless he means it was delayed a year and a half. Like, it was supposed to launch, what? A year and a half ago. Yeah, from, from last year. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I think what one of the things, like... One of the things Bethesda... Um, they uh, One of the things about Bethesda is kind of like... Um, they are sort of notorious for bugs. So maybe they want to they wanna make sure this release is in a polished state. The problem is when you've got an engine like Creation Engine where like every single cup is interactive, you're going to have every single... Every, every object in the Creation Engine is interactive. You can like pick them up and manipulate them, throw them around and all that stuff. We've all got ragdolls. There's always going to be these weird interactions that they can't always track. But like... I think they probably want to launch it in a polished state. So maybe maybe it did get delayed a year and a half. But I don't think we'll... You said you think it might get delayed out of this year, right? I'm not, I mean, I was. I think Redfall gets delayed. Um, I'm going to say Starfield doesn't. Yeah, I don't think Starfield gets delayed Yeah, anymore. And our buddy Special Nick of Xbox Era says, If you two don't agree to Xbox 4... You'll experience a wrath like nothing you've ever seen before. Hey, I'm always I'm down. To, I mean, <clears throat> I'm down to do Xbox Four. Yeah, I'll do Xbox Four. I don't want to suffer. Uh, we don't, don't want to suffer, suffer Nick's wrath. wrath. Yeah, the wrath of Nick. The wrath of Nick is not a good thing. No, so, it's not. And with that, Spooky. I think it's time to head on out and enjoy the weekend. Um, so thank you guys for being here. And it's been a very oh, very. Right. There's another super is there another one? Uh, I don't know. I think I got all. I think I got all of them. I can I... see from the blessed one. Did you um, get that one? The amount of people that don't realize the importance of the word desire. And oh yeah, statement. yeah. I read that one. I read that one. Oh, oh okay. Betrayal oh, just says if we one. if we can if we can establish unique settlements on all on all a planet, Starfield is not ready. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. But uh, thank you guys. Right. Wrap uh, up. For being here, I think Jez is a little bit tired. I'm getting a little tired, too. Three-hour show really takes it out of you. But we do it for you because everybody seems to love the three-hour shows. And I had no idea we'd go this long. I thought it was going to be two hours, but here we are. And, um, you know, we'll be back next week. We'll probably do an Xbox 4 with Nick and John over on their channel. Yeah, You know, Jez will say he'll he'll do it, and then he'll back out that that day. He does that that a lot. Uh, we'll see, man. I mean, yeah, you put pressure on me because you'll back out if I back out. I, I, I huh? huh? Well, it's it's not Xbox back. Four with without you, so it could what's be an the, Xbox Three Point Five. No, there's no. It's only Xbox. If me and Jez are uh, we're a package, we come together. So a package. You know what else is a package? What's what else? My balls. Jesus from Christ. Manscaped.com. You know you can get twenty percent off on Manscaped.com with our checkout code XB Two. But yeah, guys. Thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, Ryan, yeah. we're gonna sign us off. We're gonna yep. get out of here. Enjoy the weekend, and uh, keep it gaming. Later, guys. <laughs>